Sorry. Hours. Yes. What's going on, man? How are you? How are you? How are you? Thank you. How are you? Doing well. Um, been a little while since you fought in the States. How does it feel to, to be back here competing? Yeah, I, I love the States. Obviously, I've been coming back for some of the like, pages fights and stuff like that, but I love it over here, you know. Uh, and I've been, I've funny enough, like today I've got a bit of energy, so I've been walking around Chicago, enjoying my time here. It's lovely. So, yeah. It's nice to get some consistency, too. I know you had that big break before your last fight, but now here you are getting a second booking, like in a few months, essentially. Yeah, I mean, that was my plan. I was... So I wanted to get my fight out in February and I wanted to one want to have one early summer. And then my plan is I'm gonna break this guy's face and I'm gonna fight at the end of the year and break break another guy's face. There's a there's a plan. And and now that you had a little bit of time to digest that performance yeah. that you had a few months ago, um, I guess how'd you think you did? Like how did it feel to be in there? Was there any rust or did you feel like obviously the result was great? No, I mean I, I loved every moment of it. You know, I I, I love to do it. This is I I realized, you know, I, I was doing my wake up run uh last week, end of last week, and I was like, how lucky am I to get to cause myself pain and suffering in order to achieve greatness and, and chase something that I love? And that's rare. And uh, for me to be able to perform in front of thousands of people, I was like, this is it. This is the past three years when I was couldn't walk and I was at the gym. And all the nights I was like crying and this and that. It's like, I'll find it performing again. And you know, it's, it's amazing. So even this this time, same way, like, I was just looking forward to being there. My only issue was, obviously, once I connected one shot, I didn't really want to be in there, so he kept falling over. And then the ref made a good call, but it would have been nice. I was, I literally had something spectacular in my mind that I wanted to do. And then, obviously, the fire got called. I, I should have not thrown the last right hand, and, yeah, probably would have pulled out. But otherwise, it's great. I guess how vital is that you can, you can go and replicate things in the gym as much as possible, but I mean, getting in there and actually having that experience like that, was that like, did it stick out to you? Like, Hey, I learned a lot about myself one way or another tonight. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously it's very different. The whole, whole the fact that no one's wearing shin pads and small gloves and all that, it's, it's a lot scarier and you feel, feel the shots as well a bit more, but um, I do this day in, day out. This is why I'm very consistent with what I do. And uh, because of that, everything comes quite naturally. It doesn't feel so different when I'm in there. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And I guess for you, uh, talk about this fight a little bit, uh, a pretty tough opponent. I feel like, do you feel like kind of this is maybe the one people have always labeled you as like the next big prospect or one of the best prospects in MMA. But do you think this is kind of your your time maybe to solidify yourself as like, hey, I'm, I'm more than a prospect. I'm a guy that's a contender now. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely legit, you know, and he's definitely legit. He's super tall. He's a tall, tall guy. Uh, but then I fought with Flora before, uh, who was very legit, and I fought him when I was 19. So, but this guy is definitely probably the, he's very tough. Uh, he's got he's got a nice head kick as well. It's quite. It's I don't think he's very special at any specific area. It's more like he's got attributes like his height. So I still need to see him how tall he is, you know. But I've been training with light heavyweights just to to be able to, to be able to mimic that height. That he's bringing to the table, and that's that's the awkward part. But I'm looking forward to it. You know, I put the work in. I've done all the suffering that I needed to do, and Friday night I'm just going to perform, and I cannot wait. You mentioned Will. I just wanted to ask. Um, you know, looking at your record, he's the only one you went to decision with, and just recently he was flagged for performance enhancing drugs in a different promotion. I wonder if you had thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, firstly. He's super tough. That's why I had to go decision with him. I dropped him like 10 times and he just didn't want to give up. So, uh, you know, fair play to him. And I, when I was younger, I trained with him as well. Um, again, you have to be, um, I have to look at it. I'm, I'm going to look at it from a different perspective because he's not the only light heavy that fell to drugs that's in that, in, in, in that organization. And don't get me wrong, if you, if you want to cheat, you know, like, screw you. Do you get away, especially when we fight and, you know, alive. You know, I'm always a punch away from death. But at the same time, if you want to cheat, like, like don't get caught. And all these guys, like, I'm, I'm, I'm being said, you know, I, firstly, fuck you. But if you really want to do it, just be smart with it. And that's the only thing, like, I just know, I've heard stories from their gym already when, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go into that. But, um, yeah, it's sad. It's sad. I, I would have loved him to, to win that one million. You know, he definitely deserves it. So uh, it's annoying, but just it's his fault. You know, if you want to be stupid, 
that would be stupid in a smart way, if you get what I mean. Do you want to give anybody any tips? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Nah, I've never, <laughs> I've actually, I don't drink. I don't do anything. I don't. I keep my body so clean. I don't want to. I'm still young. I, there's no point. I literally you don't even see me drink. I don't go. I don't eat fast food. Even the the beef I get is grass fed and grass finished. I make sure that everything that I put in my body is, is the best thing as possible. So, can you just talk to me a little bit about what sort of fight you're expecting on Friday night? Yeah, you know he's. It, I, I truly believe that I can finish him in the first, end of first or early second. It depends how tough he's going to be. Uh, he's definitely training with good guys. He's he's at um, he's at Kilcliffe now. Uh, he's got good coaching, and I'm 100 percent sure this is going to be the best him. You know, but I truly believe that I was so consistent in this camp that um, I can like show something spectacular again. And every single fight that I do, if you watch it back, even when I was super sick and when I was fought fighting in the states, and I had sinus and chest infection even that was fun i was doing spinning elbows and su- like big suplexes and this and that so I, I can i truly i truly believe that i'm going to finish him but it's going to be a great fight and it's going to be a fun fight and i'm going to come out victorious and you already mentioned a little bit talking about being a prospect i'm, I'm wondering if you've thought a little bit about rankings and what you might have to do to be ranked yeah um you know what i used to i used to have this thing in my mind when i'm like I'm going to beat John Jones's record. Like, I'm, going to, I'm going to be 23 and I'm going to be a world champion. Always my knee happen. And it kind of like calmed me down, calmed me down as well because I realized like the sport is tough now. You know, like this guy I'm fighting as well, he's legit. And I look at Johnny Evelyn and all these guys and I truly believe that I can, technically, I'm, I'm, I might sound very cocky, but I technically I believe that my striking is better than these guys. I believe my jits is better than these guys. And I believe my wrestling because I've been wrestling. That's, that's why I started with wrestling, right? So I believe my wrestling can match their wrestling as well. Um, but I just don't have the experience yet. You know, I've had six fights. I'm 23. No point rushing anything. So um, I'm just going to do my thing, beat as many people up as they give me. And then when it's time to uh, fight for title, I'll be there. I'll be ready. Norbert, you've kind of talked to me a lot coming into this fight about breaking faces and your plans yeah. for the rest of this year. Now that you're here, you said you're energized on fight week. How does it actually feel to be here and just knowing the path that you've laid out to me and everyone in this room, it gets started this weekend. I know you started it earlier this year, but it really gets started for 2024 and beyond. Well, first, I'm still waiting for the night, nightclub recommendations. So, I got you. Uh, I got you. So, um, but yeah, man, it's just, it's great. I love, I love to do this. This is what I do. This is... You know, all those days I do. And I, I'm quite open about it. I'm a, I'm a very emotional guy, not in an aggressive way, but I'm emotional as in like, she can get to me a little bit. And and I have rough sessions and I have rough days and I have days when I'm like in my bed, like, why? Why is it so hard and whatever? But at the same time, I love it. You know, I grew up doing it. And and my, my father was a fighter. His father was a fighter. I think even his father was a fighter. You know, it just, I truly believe it's in my DNA, it's in my blood and just to be able to carry my name and, and all that stuff is just amazing to be to have this opportunity at such a young age it's rare and i'm so i'm so happy with it so yeah there's definitely an adrenaline i could feel it in the room but when you talk about you know just being an emotional guy what are the emotions for you because as mentioned previously yeah. you know you have been touted as a highly regarded prospect you're looking to take that prospect title off and become a contender and one day a champion so what emotions have you had coming into this fight a lot of emotions. Um, I had I had days when I didn't feel like my training was going so well, and I had days when I felt like I I'm on top of the world. So uh, I'm definitely very excited. Uh, I'm definitely very curious as well. I, I really want to know um, how well I can match with this guy. And as I said, I don't think I think it's quite basic, but he's a bit of a giant, so it's something that I want to get used to. Um, especially nowadays in this sport, there are more and more giants every day. Uh, but yeah, there's loads of. Uh, it's hard to explain. There's so many feelings when you when you do this sport, and uh, I'm embracing every single one of them, whether they're positive or negative. You know, I learn. I I, I learn to deal with them, and you know, it's it's good as well for my future. I'm I'm 23. I get to learn with these. You know, I get to live up to these moments, and when I get older, I'm just gonna look back at it and like this is what shaped me, and I I'm really enjoying it, and I'm embracing every single moment. Hey, Norbit. Um, this is your second fight on United States soil and your first since 2019. First of all, how was your flight and what have you been able to do here in Chicago in your free time? Yeah, so the flight was okay because uh, obviously the weight cut. It was like 
everyone's eating next to me and stuff like that. I was like, I can smell the food. I'm like, ah, oh, it's making the flight a bit longer. Um, otherwise, it was okay. But yeah, Chicago is great. I mean, uh, just today I was walking around. I went to the aquarium as well. Uh, they did like a, a dolphin show and everything. It was pretty sick. Uh, like as, as I said, like like I, like I said, uh, yesterday I was a bit tired from the flight, but today I've got a lot of energy, so I still want to be going around, moving around, you know. Uh, kind of, yeah, I want to want to slice it a little bit. And then your opponent has four knockout wins on his record. Where do you see your advantages in this matchup stylistically? I feel like technically I'm just better than him, whether it's striking, whether it's grappling, whether it's like all, that, all, that, all that stuff. I feel like I'm better. He's He's got that height advantage, you know. And I truly believe that. I, I can see so many finish, as in like, I can see myself finish him in so many different ways. Um, I think... What he's got is that height, and that's why his his head kick is not special. It's just because it's so long, you know, and it goes a long way. His body and head kick, whatever. Um, so, and I'm quite small for, for, for the weight. That's the fact. It's which is really annoying because I weigh more than most guys that I know. It's just my frame is well with big hands and a big, you know what? Uh, <laughs> but um, no, it's just literally my frame is quite small. He's big boy. So it's a, it's a nice fight for me to have just to to get, you know, to get to uh, see where I'm at and how I'm dealing with the height. But as I said, I've been very consistent in this camp and I've been dealing well with it. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Santiago. Hi, Norbert. Hello from Amsterdam. Thank you for the time. Everybody in the gym is on winning tracks and performing at a high level. I was cage side when you fought in Dublin last February. You had one of the best performances of the night. One month later, MVP steamrolls the number five ranked welterweight in 10 seconds with you in his corner. KSI wins a big fight with you in his corner. Alfie Davis, Mike Shipman, everyone is on winning ways. The London Shoot Fighters gym is making a lot of noise. How does it feel for you to be a part of this? Yeah, I mean, all I can say is LSF for life. You know, that's why they literally like my family, you know. Um, and it's not like... You know, some gym like, oh, they're my family, this and that, and everyone's snaking around. If someone's a rat, put them up for being a rat and stuff like that. We're very close. That's why we're such a small gym in that way that we don't have 100 professionals because we're so tight. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, I'm just so happy for all the guys and, and, and I'm proud to be part of the team and I'm pr proud to be able to uh, uh, represent my shoe fighters. It, it's truly is an honor. Your opponent, Camille, fought last year against Costello Van Stinus. Did you watch that fight? And did you use this for game planning against him on Friday? Yeah, of course I was there. Um, I mean, yeah, there, there was definitely uh, things that I could take from that fight. Um, but at the same time, he did change teams. You know, he'd been he's been training with good training partners. He went to Tiger now. He finished his camp at Kilcliff. He had good coaching. Uh, and Costello is a very tough guy. Costello I, I, he's, he's wild, you know. And that that takes him, takes him. That, can, that can go a long go way. A long way. Uh, but um, yeah, I've been watching him. You know, I've seen bits bits of him from all the fights, even from in training. So uh, yeah, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Jade. Hey Norbert, how's it going? I'm all good. I'm all good. How are you? Hey man, can you just tell me what MVPs meant to your career early on and how he's helped you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's a big brother to me, uh, inside and outside the cage. You know, he taught me a lot, inside and outside the cage. Uh, and and he's always there. You know, he messaged me today as well. He's like, "How you doing?" Because he, uh, he couldn't he couldn't come out. But he's like, "How you doing? How's the way, bro?" Blah. So we and we speak every single day. He's literally like my big brother, and uh, it's great to have someone like that uh, in my corner. And as you can see, his style um, influenced my style as well. So yeah, he's done a lot. Patrick. Hey, Norbert. Um, so last time out was your first fight in two years. Very nice knockout victory. How important is it for you to stay consistent and build the active and get that time back that you missed out? So I think that time was more... I missed out on financial stuff rather than skill and, and all that stuff. I learned a lot about myself in that time. Uh, but yeah, I definitely want to be consistent now. You know, I want to... I want to get myself a nice house. I want to get myself a nice car. I want to do this and that. And all I have to do in order to get there is fight as much as I can. But um, as I said, like improvement-wise, I'm at the gym every single day. I'm literally, I'm at the gym from 
from 10 in the morning till 8. That's that's what I do every every day. Well, almost every day. Sundays, I just do a run. Uh, but um, yeah, like I've been improving. Uh, so that that didn't make that much difference. But obviously, the experience I missed out on and the financial opportunities I missed out on as well. That was the annoying side. But otherwise, you know, I cannot I cannot wait to get as many fights in as possible and uh, start ch uh, chasing that title soon. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Brilliant. Hey, right here. Yeah. It's a folder. Yeah, uh, Carl, you've been. Is this on? You've been a uh, fighter, pro fighter for twelve years, right? And this is your first fight here in the the states, right? Yes, bro. Let's say twelve years. Well, yeah, two thousand eleven, right? Yeah, it is. You're right. Jeez. Yeah. Um, but yeah, mate, the answer question is my first time fighting the States, yeah. Yeah, what do you think? Do you like traveling or did you prefer? I mean, you had all these home games in Dublin. Like, would you have preferred that? Ah, bro, we talked about that in the hotel last night. It's like fighting a three round in Dublin. It's a class experience. It is already old. But like, I don't know about every other Irish guy, but like for me, one of the best things about doing MMA, one of the main goals is like to fight on a primary organization, one of the biggest show in the world. In a massive state in America. I mean, I'm in Chicago, it's the second biggest city in America, and a class arena. It's just, it's one of them like lifting goals. For me, it's like it's just, I've already won. I'm playing in Chicago, the biggest organization in the world, and I get to pay the bill. It's just, yeah, this is for me, this is class. Business. Yeah, this has been the goal for you. And, and obviously, uh, you're really rolling now. You're on a great winning streak. I guess, is there anything you can kind of point towards to say, like, hey, I've always been a good fighter, but now I'm being really consistent with my performances. Is there any sort of changes that you made to kind of get on this role, or has it just been putting it all together? Um, if I really had to dig deep in it, the only change that I could really pinpoint that's made a massive difference is, like, I'm never really taking time off. I'm taking time off, but it's not like, in the past, I would have had a fight and then maybe not train for, like, a couple of weeks. Just trying to enjoy life. I was fighting on lower nights. Like, I always train. So it's not like I'm going through a training camp and then going down 50% and have to bring it back up again. I'm always maintaining like a, a high level and then just bumping up weeks before the fight. But um, yeah, that's the only thing I can say is different. I mean, I've always been consistent, but these last, say, 12, 14 months are really just put my head down and just put the work in. What do you think of this uh, matchup? Obviously, uh, kind of a guy that's maybe a little bit more established in the Bellator hierarchy. He's had some yeah. big fights here, former LFA champion. Um, is this the sort of name that you were hoping for? Yeah, well, that's what I wanted. This is, I mean, my last fight was against uh, Wazanski, an unranked guy, a very dangerous opponent, but this is the kind of fights I want. My first fight back in three years was against Lepraxen. He was ranked number six, well-established in the Bellator division. But this is what I want because I was out right for three years, and I want these guys to, because these type of fights and wins have only pushed me up closer and closer that number one contender spot. So yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I want. 
And what does he bring to the table, uh, do you think? What do you have to be careful of? Obviously, he's had some nice submissions that have gone on his highlight reel, but when you look at him from your perspective, what do you got to be careful of? Um, everything. I mean, all the guys in my weight class, if they land one heavy shot, it can change the course of the fight. But um, for me, personally, probably be durable, to get decent wrestling, good submission moves, so just fight like you always fight, fight smart, stay switched on, and just don't give him anything, don't make any mistakes, and give him any easy ones, just make it a hard night for him. Be difficult. And I guess, what are you kind of setting out to to accomplish this year, so to speak? Like, I know the short-term plan, get a win, but um, how does your path to the title go? Is it just kind of trying to stay semi-active, like you talked about, kind of continue to, to mount these performances? My plan is falling into place. When I was re-saving the battle tour, I said I want four to five fights within the year. And this is I'm on, this is my third fight in eight months. And if I all goes to plan, touch wood, I'll be on well, no injuries, nothing. I'll be on the Dublin Con in September. So it'll be four fights in the space of a year. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, when these next when this next fight, that sets me up, in my opinion, for a number one contender shot or title fight. So get this one away and then September again. And then that's it, see what goes somewhere. But yeah, I mean, like I said, that's my plan was to get four to five fights within the year. And I'm halfway there. You kind of already talked about it, but first time in the States, top five opponent in the rankings. Really, the stage is set for you not only to come in and explode into the top five, but then lay out your own plan, a title contending shot or a title contender fight uh, in Dublin at the end of this year. Can you really put into words just how big this fight is for you? This fight's like any other fight. Um, for me, for my was saying about so I treat every fight like it's the number one contender fight. Uh, or it's like a title fight because if you look past any opponent or you think it's it's not as important, that's when stuff goes to shit. So my mindset hasn't really changed. It's a massive. I'm aware of the, the ramifications, but for me, it's just the exact same sort of fight. And what guy I gotta beat? I mean, this guy isn't a person to me. It's just a guy that I gotta pass to get to where I need to be. So, Business as usual for you coming into this one. Yeah, but in the States, you know, in a big city like, you know, here that loves, you know, they love their fights. What can you do with such a, you know, tough opponent across from you to really brand yourself out and really grow your fan base and show the entire world what you're capable of? Finish him. It's hard for him to say sweet. That's it. And then show that, okay, Carl Murray is legit. I think I've shown that, but I put this guy away or beat him to say sweet. Okay, he belongs in the top five. He's meant to be here. And he's a real genuine threat. Hey. No problem. Just, I guess. Okay. Hello, um, you're on an impressive three fight win streak and ranked eighth in Bellator. Do you believe that a win this weekend puts you into a title eliminator? I think so. Yes. I mean, like you said, I'm three and zero. Um, with a win this weekend, it would be four and zero, four wins in a row with two wins over. Two guys that are ranked in the top ten, so yeah, I think that puts me right up there. And it, it, if I win this fight, like I plan to do, I think it's it sets me up for and the Taylor ramification, especially with them Coven and Romero fighting and Anderson and Phil Davis. So there's a lot of moving parts in this in the yeah, show. Like a lot of light heavyweights this weekend. Uh, your opponent Alex Polizzi is a former collegiate wrestler. Do you anticipate him to try and take this fight to the ground? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, he, all his fights he does seem to. Favors wrestling, which is smart if that's what he should be doing. But an SBG, I mean, that's we train for that every single day. So it's not, not something I'm not going to be surprised by. Um, but yeah, I do expect him to try to take me down, especially when I hit him a few times. I think he's going to try and take me down. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. No problem. No problem. Hello. Quick question. Yes. Um, since uh, you're in Chicago, what is the one site that you look forward to seeing here while you're visiting Chicago? To be honest, there's so much. Um, I mean, I've always had a, an interest in Chicago. Sh uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Chicago is the second biggest city in America, is it? Am, am I right? Second biggest city, third? Okay, close enough. But it's like there's so much history in this place too. It's like there's so much things to look at. When we got here, I was like, shit, it's like, where do I go? But there's nothing in particular, but I just want to enjoy the city for a week all week. And it's just, it's nice too because you're cutting calories, you're water loading, you got to kill yourself to make it. It's like, there's a nice people to buzz too, just seeing the city and give you stuff to do. But no, there's nothing in particular. I just want to see as much as I can. Yeah. I look forward to the food after I make weight. That's I'm looking forward to that the most. Everything, everything, everything. Sean? Hi, Carl. You mentioned there that uh, there's three light heavyweight fights on the card this weekend, but you're kind of the odd man out because all the rest of them have had fights against each other. 
do you think if you win that you are the one in pole position to actually get the next title fight above all of the other light heavyweights in the three fights? Um, I think it all depends on the performance and how I beat this guy. Um, and like I said, what it depends what happens in the other fights. But yeah, I think if I beat this guy or finish him, it sort of it says me at least for a number one contender fight or title fight. Yeah. Do you think there's any uh, hope that that title fight could happen as soon as September in Ireland? If you're to go and get a big knockout, and you know, obviously the main event, if if uh, if you're there, kind of standing outside after that main event, is it possible September title fight in Ireland? You never know, mate. I mean, the first one back I called it Yoel Romero, and I got an unranked guy. So I'm not. I mean, I'm just happy to fight anybody. Bellator's given me a name, a date, the venue. I'm like, okay, what are they saying? I'm just going to keep fighting because if I keep win winning. That solves all the problems. And if I keep winning, eventually I'll get that shot at the belt. And that's just my goal to keep winning fights, keep beating who they put in front of me, and then fight for the belt. Santiago. Hi, Carl. Thank you for the time. No uh, did you work a lot with John Kavanaugh? And is John there with you for in your corner? Because Richie is also on the card, right? No, uh, John, he had prior commitments booked before this fight was announced. I've got uh, Dave Roach and Will Fleury. With me and Richie Small has Artem Lobov, Guy Rooney, and Dave Roach as well. Zach? Hello, Carl. And you mentioned that tonight is a big, uh, big, um, big show for the light heavyweight division. So, how do you see the fights going between Yoel Romero and Vadim Nemkov and Corey Anderson and Phil Davis? Oh, they're really good matchups. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. If the Nemkov or Amaro goes either way, I mean, any one of those guys could win that fight, but I would probably sway more towards Nemkov. But I mean, it's Yolder Murrow, you can't bet against Yolder Murrow. Like, um, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if it went either way. Um, Anderson and Davis, very similar, very, very similar. Um, pretty much the same as the Nemkov and Amaro fight. I wouldn't be surprised if it went either way, but I don't know who to pick at that one. I don't know. I really don't know. Party. I really don't know who to pick in that one. That one's uh, sort of 50-50 in my eyes. Hi, Carl. A huge, uh, huge Bellator car ahead this uh, this weekend. Um, for you to represent Ireland on this level and to show your dominance continually in the promotion, how does that make you feel? It's what I'm here to do, mate. It's what I've worked the last 12 years for. It's what I train day in, day out for. It's just, it's right. It's where I'm meant to be. It's what I'm supposed to be doing.
What's going on, Richie? How are you? Hey, what's up, man? Doing well this week? Sorry? Are you doing well this week? Doing good. Yeah, happy to be here. And have you, you've never fought in Chicago before, right? No, first time here. Yeah. I'm looking forward to fighting here now on Friday night. Yeah, absolutely. You uh, pretty excited to get back in there? I can't wait. You know what I mean? It's time to start climbing the ranks now. So I've got a ranked opponent. So I was trying to beat this guy and go from there, beat the next guy. Yeah, and he's a guy I think uh, maybe not a lot of people are jumping at the opportunity to fight. He's got an undefeated record right now. He's he's looked pretty good from what we've seen. So I guess uh, when you got that name, was there any hesitation to, to sign on the dotted line? No, there wasn't. I for anybody. I literally got his name sent and I replied straight away saying yes. So it was... You're here for everybody. I'm here to pick pounds away for everybody and get the belt. That's my main goal in this sport. Taking on a tough test, you obviously have the opportunity to, uh, you know, get the reward as well on the other side of it, fighting a ranked guy, like you said. So um, talk to me about how big you think this moment is for you and your career in Bellator. Um, well, the fact that I'm in America, like they're obviously putting time into me and they're bringing me over here. And like I fought there recently in the three arena. So like it's all to play for now. You know what I mean? I keep coming back. You have to beat these guys to keep coming back. So that's the one I did. I'm going to go Friday night. I'm going to beat this guy. And then sit down and revise what's next. The matchup itself, um, are you a guy that like watches a lot of tape on your opponent? Do you kind of have your coaches do that? Or? Um, I don't watch too much. I watched his last fight versus Vichel. You're only as good as your last fight. So we watched that fight and then we're going to go off of that. Yeah, what did you think of that performance? Uh, how good did he look in that? Yeah, they, 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 but they, they was good. it was good. It was kind of like a kickboxing match pretty much with a little bit of grappling. But some MMA fight on Friday night, all skills have been involved. For you, I guess, um, what do you think fans should expect to see out of you in this one? He is going forward as always. As I go forward from the start, the bell goes. Is it nice? Uh, you know, I just asked uh, Carl the same question, but I know you guys love fighting at home and the energy there is awesome, but is it once in a while, the, is, is, does it feel, um, do, you, do you enjoy kind of breaking that a little bit and fighting somewhere where you can just kind of focus on the fight and not the, you know, my friends are going and that whole aspect of it? It doesn't really make a difference where it is. I mean, it's a fight, it's a fight. So like a way in the day before a fight the day off, it doesn't make a difference where it is. I want to get paid the same regardless where it's Dubner here. Thanks. Hey, what's uh, up? Hi. Just, just kind of going off that, um, how different is fight week when you're not at home? Is it easier? You don't have as much obligation? Do you kind of prefer being a little bit away? Um, this is my first time being away with Bellator. It was pretty much the same. I mean, it's the identical pretty much. Like we go to hotel, fight week as well, back in Dublin, even though we live local. So it was pretty much identical to me. Richie, you you know kind of talked a lot about you know fighting over here, but back home there's been such a huge rise in Irish MMA as you know because you're a part of it. Carl, you and Carl are here, only two guys here. It says a lot about how Bellator looks at you and bringing you over to the states. Just can you speak to just how strong the sport is back home and, and with fighters like yourself, Carl, and everybody else on your team and uh, around the country? Uh, it's crazy. The sport's grown like leaps and bounds back home. Like. Pretty much Bellator Dublin is the SPG show at this stage. So like it says it all, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, and with this opportunity you have this weekend, you know, not only do you send a message every time you fight, but now being over here in the States, it's an opportunity for you to grow your brand and make the world know about you, you know, just in case they don't know. So how does that feel for you to know that, hey, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to do what I expect to do, and now people on the other side of the world are going to see just how good I am? Yeah, like, realistic, like, everything's in America – it always looks bigger and better. You know what I mean? Like where you fight the same opponent in Dublin, anywhere. It was in America. People think it's the biggest. You know what I mean? There's so much tech saying you're fighting in America. That's the top of the sport. You know what I mean? So I'm hoping we had a big win here now Friday night and keep growing and come back and come back and come back. Well, all of Ireland knows about you. I'm sure all of America will know about you. I'll be very soon. Thank you. Hi, Richie. Hey, what's up, man? You're facing an undefeated prospect from Dagestan. How much of your training camp was dedicated to defending the takedown? Zero. I'll be taking him down. I'm taking him down. I'm on top of him. And so real grappling is down. So if it was up to you, where would you like this fight to take place, standing or on the ground? Him on his back, me on top, elbow on his face in. Thank you. That's what it's going to be. Sean? Hi, Richie. Sean Sheen here from uh, Severe MMA. This isn't the first time you've come into a fight as a, I suppose, as a big underdog. You've gone out to Ukraine, you've gone to different places and, and beat lads before. Is that the, a good mindset for you, in turn, to fight as an underdog? I don't know if the last fight as well, Sean. Mm -hmm. 100%. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference, underdog or not. I mean, I'm hard to deal with, so I'm looking forward to it. 
like I don't know why I'm the underdog. We have the same amount of fights, like all high level opponents as well. So as just someone's a pain underdog and not. I mean, I get focused with opinions. Obviously, we have a card coming up here in September again in Ireland, another one in February of next year. If you win this fight, you'll be in the rankings. Is it in your head to be the first ever Irish Bellator champion in the, in the, the run that you're on at the moment? I don't even think that far ahead, Sean. Like, obviously, uh, I think I beat this guy. Like I was said there, no one wants to fight this guy, not for anybody. So I don't see why I wouldn't be next. You know what I mean? I don't see any reason why I wouldn't be. But like I said, this opponent is first, and then um, we'll go from there. Santiago. Hi, Richie. Thank you for the time. We hey, spoke welcome. to each other in Dublin after your last fight against Piotr, and you said that you had trained in the Netherlands with Said and Ilias Bulaid in Utrecht. Did you get to do a part of your camp there again for this fight? No, for this camp I didn't, unfortunately, just where, where everything played out, but I'll be definitely back to Said and Ilias and the guys in Utrecht um, very soon. Patrick? Hey, Richie. Fun fact for you, man. You were 10-0-1 against European and UK-based fighters. Once again, you're matched up with a European fighter. Does that play any factor in how you prepare for a fighter, or is it just another name across the... I didn't even think paper? of it like that. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference where he's from. Like, a lot of guys put too much respect to where they're from. It doesn't make a difference. We all bleed the same, so it's a fight. Like, you know what I mean? The best man's going to win on Friday night. Zach? Thank you, Richie. And you mentioned that he is a very tough opponent in front of you, but what do you think separates you from your opponent in terms of skill and abilities? Um, I just want to keep going forward no matter what happens. Like, I think that's the biggest thing. Like, no matter how good someone is, you're going to get tired. I want to keep walking him down, keep standing on him. In my last fight, I was getting hit with everything. I still kept going forward. No back steps once. That's the biggest thing I have with things. Just go forward and make it a fight. Mills? Hey, how's it going, Richie? MMA locker room, part of Pub Sports Radio. How you feeling today? Oh, it's going yourself, man. I'm doing great, man. I just want to give you your props, man. You're one of those guys who always reaches out to the people on Instagram. Um, you actually commented on a lot of my posts uh, about two years ago. No problem. I appreciate that. But this is what I'm here for. Now, nah, this this is what I'm here for, though, man. Ten and two. Only uh, four and one in the Bellator cage. What changed in your going into these fights? You're going in there to finish these opponents, not just to look for a fight. Well, obviously the goal is always to finish. Like I'm always looking to finish. Sometimes you just can't. The, the guys are just durable. Like it's only 50 minutes in the day. But the, like the goal is, like I fought Peter in Dublin. He was 17 and four, and at this guy tomorrow is 12 and 0. Like I'm fighting these guys, beating these guys, and. But I want to fight for the belt. You know, I'm not looking for the easy fights and to stay on the prelims. I mean, I eventually want to be like up top of the card and fighting for belts. Like that's what you have to do. You want to fight for the belts. You have to fight the best guys. Marty. Hey, Richie. Big fight ahead and big opportunity for you fighting a ranked opponent. Uh, where would you see yourself in the promotion with a win here, ranking wise? Number one contender. How else could it be? Like, I'm the champions beat everybody else pretty much. And they're all booked. Number one contender, or I don't know, like obviously Patricia was fighting, and I don't want to think that far ahead. But if I beat Tamar, I don't see why I wouldn't be next or very damn close to being next.
Timor, uh, welcome back. Uh, how does it feel to be back? You got a fight in front of you on Friday. You excited to get back in there? Тимур, приветствуем вас. У вас предстоит бой. В пятницу как себя чувствуете, как подготовились? Чувствую себя хорошо. Подготовился. Тоже думаю, нормально. Бою будет видно. Осталось подогнать весь. И все, мы готовы. Thank you. I feel great. Uh, everything is going great. The camp. Uh, just we have to do the weight cut. That's the most important thing now. And the cage will show the, uh, the fight, the outcome. Saw you uh, debut in Bellator seven months ago. Were you hoping to uh, take that much time off, or were you hoping to get back in there sooner? Прошлый бой с Bellator у вас был семь месяцев назад. Вы хотели бы, чтобы в промежутке этому у вас еще один мой, может быть, бой был или нормально то, что семь месяцев был перерыв у вас? Не, я, конечно, хотел бы еще подраться. Просто да, обстоятельства получилось так, ну вышло так, что не пол не получилось мне восстать на ближайший турнир. Я хотел подраться в марте. До Рамадана, но не получилось, и получилось, как видите, да. No, as a matter of fact, I wanted to have an extra fight. Uh, I was hoping to get one prior to March, uh, because it was a month of Ramadan, but then there are certain circumstances happened that didn't make it, but for myself, I would love to have another fight before that. And now that you've had some months to think about the performance that you had against Daniel Weichel, I mean, what did you, uh, kind of give me your assessment of, of how you think you did in that fight? Uh, у вас было достаточно времени, чтобы uh, по поводу своего предыдущего боя подумать, как все прошло. Uh, вы какие-то выводы, результаты сделали или вас устроило, как бой с Дэниелом прошел? Yeah, конечно, каждый бой, uh, ты видишь свои ошибки. Не бывает так, что слишком идеально. Ну, может быть, я-то для себя выписал да, свои какие-то недо недостачи, что можно сделать в другом бою. Потому что у меня было мало времени, за две недели я вышел на бой. Поэтому, думаю, нормально для такого короткого времени подготовиться на такого соперника. Думаю, неплохо, но можно всегда лучше. Um, overall, uh, I always do uh, like go over the fight and see uh, what could have been done better. So I did the same with Daniel. Uh, keep in mind that uh, I took that fight on two uh, week notice. Uh, so I didn't really have much preparation. But again, there is always something you can improve. And yes, I'm the kind of person who always analyzes his fight. Uh, by my fights. So yeah, um, I, I definitely watched it. Daniel's renowned in this division is one of the toughest guys. He's a pretty big name, former title challenger. So when you beat him on two weeks notice, like you said, did you expect that that would give you some sort of like contender fight? Like, were you surprised at all uh, when they offered you this opponent instead? Daniel is one of the best fighters in the Bellator. He fought for a long time. You fought for him. What do you think about it? Того соперника, которого вам сейчас дали, он достойный или вы ожидали кого-то получше получить? Соперник достойный, я смотрел его бои. Ну, как сказать, я на каждого, на каждого соперника готовлюсь одинаково. Я всегда настроен на войну, а дальше уже как пойдет. Делаем все, чтобы выиграть, а дальше уже как предписано, да. Um, no, I have nothing against this opponent. Uh, he, he, he's, I, I checked him. He's pretty good. Um, I pretty much prepare myself every time uh, the same way, no matter who the opponent is. Um, and I just believe that uh, God's will, whatever it's going to be, is going to be. You kind of just answered this, but I'm curious. Um, there's a big, throughout MMA history, there's been some pretty notable rivalries between Dagestan and, and Ireland. So I'm curious, does that extend at all beyond those individuals, you know, Habib, Connor, those teams? Like, do you guys feel any sort of, I don't know, butting of heads beyond that. Uh, уже достаточно такой исторический момент, что Дагестан часто с ирландцами сталкивается, да, то есть как бы вот Хабиб с Конором, это уже становится такой традицией, да, то есть как бы, как бы против ирландцев дагестанцы ходят, то есть как бы ты думаешь, что это еще будет продолжаться так в будущем тоже? Да нет, это, я не думаю, что это такое прям противостояние Дагестана с, именно с ирландцами, да, это просто единичный случай Хабиба там с Конором за это. А так, я думаю, много не думаю, я так знаю, что много есть ирландцев, таких достойных ребят, скромных. Поэтому такого даже я и не думал об этом. To be honest, you caught me off guard. I actually never thought that it was like a, such a thing that Dagestan versus Ireland. I think it's just uh, the coincidence that, you know, obviously with Connor and uh, Khabib, that was like big names. But for me, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I know they have a lot of great fighters in Ireland, and uh, but I don't see it as a rivalry necessarily. Gotcha. And I guess what should um when you, when you think of this fight going down on Friday, I guess how do you see it playing out in your head? Как вы вы видите этот бой пройдет в пятницу? Как вы в голове у вас себя это представляете? 
Ну, я не могу предсказать, как он пройдет. Я знаю то, то что я готов э, на любое, как сказать, э, на любое, э, как это сказать, не, не на любой результат, ну, на любой результат, конечно, да, то, что предписано Всевышним, на то мы и готовы. Если он предложит борьбе, мы будем бороться стойки, стойки. Поэтому я тренируюсь с такими ребятами, которые могут все. Могут хорошо бороться. Хорошая джиу-джитсу, грейплинг, вольная борьба. Я сам выходить из вольной борьбы. Стойки, я уже адаптировался в стойке, я могу хорошо поработать. Дрался с боксерами, с кикбоксерами, с высокими, худыми, низкими. Поэтому мы готовы ко всему. Um, I usually don't like uh, make predictions on the outcome. Uh, it, it really will. Uh, we'll see how that plays. Um, my arsenal is very wide, so um, I cannot really say, "Hey, we're going to be striking or we're going to be wrestling." You know, I fought all kind of guys: kickboxers, boxers. Um, me myself, I'm coming from uh, freestyle wrestling, so it just really I'm going to look for the opportunity, and once I see one, I'm going to catch you and seize on that. Hi, Teamer. <laughs> uh, you defeated Bellator veteran Daniel Weishel in Chicago last year, and you're now ranked eighth in the division. With a win this weekend, do you feel like you're ready to face the division's elite fighters like Adam Borch and Jeremy Kenny? Uh, вопрос опять же возвращается к предыдущему бою, то что Дэниела вы победили, это один из самых uh, сильных uh, бойцов uh, в вашем дивизионе в Беллаторе. Mm -hmm. uh, как вы думаете, победив его, вы уже можете претендовать на самых uh, топовых бойцов в вашем дивизионе в Беллаторе? То есть вы уже готовы к бою, встретиться с ними? Ну, я кого лига мне будет давать, я с ним буду играться и все. Дальше вот есть мои менеджера Али и Ризван, они уже будут решать. Просто говорите, кто где, я буду драться. Uh, I'm not picking my opponents. Uh, obviously, uh, it's going to be up to my managers, Ali and Ризван. And uh, eventually, we're going to go through everybody. So it's just a matter of who's going to be next, I guess. And uh, we'll, we'll see how it plays out eventually. Awesome. And then your opponent, Richie Smolin, has five submission victories on his record. Do you believe that you are still holding advantage in the grappling on Friday night? Ваш оппонент Смолен, которым будет сейчас в пятницу драться, у него а, пять побед а, болевыми. Как вы думаете, у вас все равно а, есть преимущество на теме, когда, ну, касается борьбы? Ну, я еще раз повторюсь, я работал с э, ну, ребятами, которые, я думаю, не хуже него, но точно, ну, точно не хуже него. Не буду говорить, что лучше, не буду умолять его навыки, но о, я думаю, проблем... Не составит мне это, иншала, поработать с ним и в партере, и в стойке. Я тренировал с многими разными ребятами, хорошо скиллен. Я не хочу сказать, что лучше, чем он, просто не поставить его в пределы, как хорошо, как он. И я видел людей на его уровне, и я думаю, что у меня есть достаточно экспертизы в арсенале, чтобы его убить. Так что я не думаю, что он лучше, чем мне, когда это касается грабли. I, this question may not apply quite yet because you haven't lost, but I'm wondering if there's any kind of superstition or thought about when you accept a fight that you've already won in that city or um, when you think about where you're going and what venues you fight in. Do you think about that and have like kind of a superstition about that? Вопрос касается, есть ли у тебя какие-то такие, знаешь, как идеи, мысли, которых ты пытаешься избежать, допустим, чтобы избежать победы, то есть, может, придумаешь, не надо там переспить там, через что-то, ну, как вот у людей бывают какие-то поверье там они думают вот не надо перед боем это делать или может быть лучше не иметь бой там в два раза в одном городе или тебе абсолютно без разницы не 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 мне абсолютно без разницы это я не суеверный человек поэтому как хочет Всевышний так и будет поэтому мы не можем этому противостоять мы делаем только лишь причины чтобы победить а дальше уже как суждено No, I'm not superstitious at all. Uh, I believe in God, and then I believe in God's will. So whatever is lined up, well, we should have the tools, and then God decides how to make us use those tools and which order and how to provide. So for me, it's just I do my best, and then I see how things play out. But no, I'm not superstitious. And so when it comes to your opponent, Richie Small, I know you said you have a lot of respect for him. Uh, you know, just said another fight for you. But uh, he's looking at this as an opportunity to come in, take your ranking, and, and fight his way sooner than later to a title shot. Do you feel not any pressure, but do you feel any extra motivation to kind of put a stop to his plans and continue to focus on your own goals? Ваш оппонент видит вас как шаг для себя, если он вас победит, то есть это значит, что он может также претендовать на лучших оппонентов в Беллаторе. 
А вы, может быть, как-то дополнительное давление на вас это оказывает, тоже он минус 5 по, по, по побед последний было. То есть, как вы чувствуете, давление какое-то есть со стороны вашего оппонента на вас? Нет, я вот не чувствую никакого давления. Да, у него 5 побед подряд, но у меня их 12. И много было, с кем я дрался, даже были э, без поражения ребята, но... Я не знаю, меня это... просто я выйду в клетку хладнокровно и сделаю свою работу. No, for me it doesn't mean anything. Uh, yeah, he had like uh, he hasn't lost uh, at least five fights in a row. I mean, you know, I haven't lost 12 in a row. I had people who've been undefeated that I also fought before. Uh, for me, it doesn't matter. When I go into the cage, I'm always cold-blooded. I, I don't care about the other guy. I know what I'm here for. I see the opponent and I just do my work. I know you mentioned, obviously, you know, you, you pray to God and all of that. When it comes to being undefeated so far in your career, what has been just the key to success for you and, and not lose focus on, you know, your career at hand? Вы уже упомянули, что вы часто верите в то, что есть на все воля Всевышнего. У вас отличный рекорд. Что, что для вас это значит? Какие-то, может быть, у вас есть определенные моменты к подходу, чтобы не, никакого поражения не было? Насколько вам важно, чтобы у вас не было ни одного поражения, оставлять чистый рекорд, чтобы у вас был? Ну, это, конечно, каждый хочет, чтобы у него никогда не было поражений, но э, я на это смотрю так. Я делаю все, чтобы выиграть, а уже в бою может быть все, что угодно. Поэтому, конечно же, не, не хочется терять ну, получать поражение, поражение, вообще проигрывать. Но как будет, так будет. Я-то настроен на победу. Всегда был настроен на победу. Но как будет суждено, так оно и будет. Не, никто не в силах этому помешать. Поэтому как-то э, смотришь со стороны религии, если это, то вот так. А так, э, конечно же, я не хочу проигрывать. И делаю все, чтобы не проиграть. Делаю причины. Поэтому, да, труд. Uh, yes, I, I'm, since I'm religious, I obviously believe in the uh, God's will and uh, the outcome. Uh, but for me, I'm doing, uh, and obviously I don't want to lose myself. That's the, nobody wants to. If you have a perfect record, that looks good. Nobody wants to. And you put extra work and yeah, I'm motiv extra motivated by that. that. That's something that, you know, uh, you go and you think, okay, I want to do the best of my workout. And then obviously it's going to be uh, whatever God's will that's going to play out. Uh, we'll we'll see uh, this Friday. Patrick. Hey, Tamara, I said to Richie before, he is undefeated when facing European and UK-based fighters, and you yourself are undefeated with a 12-0 record. Do, does that carry any pressure when you go into the fight holding the undefeated record? Uh, вопрос примерно повторяется. Ричи, вашего оппонента до этого спрашивали, он с европейцами со всеми дрался, и всех, кто из Европы, он побеждал. А, ну, у вас, соответственно, тоже чистый рекорд. Как, как вы думаете, есть ли какое-то в этом для вас опасение, то, что у него нет ни одного поражения европейцам? Во-первых, мы не только европейцы, мы дагестанцы, поэтому это чуть другое. Well, first of all, we are not just Europeans, we are Dagestani, that's a little bit different. Alexander? Тимур, приветствую. Хотел спросить, в полулегком весе в Беллатор у россиян не было долгое время топовых прямо бойцов. Готовы ли им стать, готовы ли стать лучшим представителем России в этом дивизионе, бороться за титул? Конечно, мы же пришли сюда за этим, за золотом. Поэтому будем делать все, чтобы добраться до вершины. Thank you.
greatest fighter in Bellator history. Right here. Tricio, uh, your first fight coming up here at Bantamweight. Um, I guess the question we're all wondering is, how are you feeling? How's the cut going? And, and just a couple of days out, how are you? I'm good. How about you? I feel good. Just uh, ready to make a history. For you, I guess you've talked about this for a long time. What was it that made now the right time? Was it just the opportunity Bellator finally gave it to you? Or did you feel like, why did you feel like this was the right time to make this move? Ah, eu acho que é natural. A gente tem o título do peso pena por muitos anos. Eu acabei vencendo o Michael Chandler em um minuto na casa de disputa do cinturão do peso leve. Então, apareceu a oportunidade agora de lutar pelo peso galo e o Balatou me ouviu. Agradeço pela oportunidade e é isso. Vamos lá pegar esse terceiro cinturão, se Deus permitir. I've been the champ for many years at Featherweight here in Bellator. I went up to 155, knocked out Michael Chandler in one minute, vacated the belt. Patricky Pitbull won it, my brother. And this opportunity arise to, to fight for the 135-pound Bantamweight title against Sergio Pettis, and I'm grateful for this opportunity. I can't wait. I'm sure when you planned this, you had an idea of how you know, moving down in weight would go. But now that you've gone through most of the process, is it what you expected? Is it, has it been easier? Has it been more difficult to, to shed those pounds? Eu mesmo não posso acreditar. Eu tô quase sem acreditar no que que tá acontecendo. A descida de peso tá sendo mais fácil do que no peso pena, mas teve um processo desde do camp da luta passada, quando eu bati o campeão do, do Rising, Kleber Koik, eu me mantive na dieta e eu tô fazendo a mesma dieta, mas não saí dela desde outubro, então para mim tá parecendo bem mais fácil bater esse peso de 61, de, de 61 quilos de bantamweight, e pra você ter uma ideia, eu tô agora com 143 pounds, então eu tô muito bem, tô conseguindo treinar forte ainda, Estou uh, bebendo muita água, estou me alimentando normal, então eu acho que uh, vocês vão ver um Padre de Bull muito melhor da, na, nessa luta que vem. Essa é a próxima luta. I can't believe how easy this process of going down the weight class has been. I've been on this diet since I beat the Rising World Champ Kleber back in, in last year, so I've been dieting. I am only eight pounds over. I've never, it's never been easier. It's easier for me making this weight than it was for making featherweight and uh I'm great I'm ready and it was easy easier than ever easier than making featherweight and I'm ready to shock the world a lot of champions I feel like once they're dominant in a division they like to stay there right they they're comfortable they're winning they're cashing big checks but you've continued to chase other goals moving up moving down so i guess why like what is it that drives you to, to try to move outside of that comfortable spot at the top that you that you already have in a division I don't like to be comfortable I, I always want to move forward i love challenges that's why i i'm always trying to put uh hard things to happen like that no other fighter in any major promotion has ever held three titles in that one promotion. So I guess for you, what would that mean for you and your legacy? Do you feel like to be the only one to ever do something? Like that? Uh, I am not thinking about that, uh, but uh, eu, eu acredito que essa é um, um resultado de um trabalho duro por muitos anos, mas eu estou focado agora na luta. Porque sem a vitória, nada disso vai acontecer. Então a gente não pode agir aqui como se eu já tivesse esse título. Tem um cara duro pela frente, que é um dos caras mais técnicos, versátil que eu já vou enfrentar. Então primeiro tem que bater nele, depois, depois pensar nos louros da glória. I'm not worried about uh, what people are going to say about me. I have a fighter that is very dangerous, very technical, and very good, a world champion in front of me named Sergio Pettis. 
my main focus is to be become the 135 pound world champion and then after I, we accomplish that goal we'll see where everybody where everybody else wants to put me Dropping down in weight, you know, obviously your, your body's going to change a lot, but are there things like timing or anything that, that are different as well? Like, is it, do you think it will take you a little bit of time to get used to being in there with somebody that's an elite 135-er? Yeah, I mean, you Tive uma estratégia no meu treinamento que foi ter dois sparrings da categoria de 57 quilos, que são mais rápidos ainda, e outro de meio um. Foi Ivan, Guilherme e Tayan. Então esses caras me trouxeram um treino adequado, todos os três imitando meu adversário, e naturalmente mais rápidos que eu, e eu consegui equiparar minha velocidade a todos os três. Então me sinto bem na categoria. Meu peso baixou natural, então eu tive uma descida gradual de peso, então eu tô confortável. Vamos ter a prova real no dia da luta. Yes, I prepared very well for this. My strategy is I brought in two flyweights, Ivan the Terrible and uh Master Splinter Guillermo and a bantamweight, Tyon the Blade, and they all were are faster than Sergio Pettis. So, I was doing six 6-minute six rounds with them. And my weight has come down natural, and my, my speed, I've been able to maintain my speed and even get my, even faster and maintain my strength, thanks to Best Bio, Chicao Freitas. There's a lot of debate amongst fighters, fans, even media, about what makes up a GOAT. I'm wondering what you believe is the definition of a GOAT. What sort of things need to be on the GOAT's resume to solidify that title? I don't know, but I'm deep on that. And I know there is a lot of goats in this game, but no one has three titles, you know? So that's the difference. We were just talking. I told him a story. I said, remember when he was in a featherweight tournament and he was able to select matchmake, who he gets to fight uh, in the featherweight a uh, million dollar tournament grand prix and at that moment when they told him that he said so that means i'm god i get to pick who gets to fight and that reminds me of like when you talk about goat mountain you're talking about the john joneses of the sport and the gsps um both those guys have two world titles uh the henry cejudo's conor mcgregor's uh all champ champs but Nobody's got that third division. And in my opinion, on June 16th, uh, Patricio Pitbull gets God mode activated. He goes above uh, Goat Mountain. He's the one that selects who becomes on Goat Mountain, in my opinion. But first, let's win that fight. My fox is on that. Hi, Patricio. Um, your brother, Patrick, is scheduled to fight your former opponent, AJ McKee. What's your opinion of this matchup? And do you do you see yourself ever competing against McKee since your rivalry rivalry is tied at one of these? Uh, we know a lot about the Jim McKee. He's good, he's tough. Uh, but I believe my brother's going to knock him out. And about me against him, I don't know, maybe maybe if I go up to the lightweight division, I believe. But I don't think he's going to go down again. And then you and your opponent, Sergio Pettis, are both dangerous strikers. How do you see this fight playing out on the feet Friday night? Uh, it, it's going to be a war uh, between snipers. So I believe my power is going to do the difference. 
And then Bellator uh, just recently announced another show in Japan. You competed on the New Year's Eve show against Ryzen. Is competing in Japan something you'd like to do again in your career at some point? Oh, yeah. Every year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, when you guys uh, first sat down, your coach said the greatest Bellator fighter of all time. You just spoke about God mode. I know we can all talk about champ champ, and we know how significant it is for you to add a third title. But just looking at your resume, now adding another name, as you expect to do this weekend in Sergio Pettis, where do you truly feel your legacy is cemented in this sport? Not Bellator, not just champions, but overall as a fighter, as a mixed martial artist, how do you feel this weekend will cement your legacy? Eu, eu realmente não sei, os fãs gostam muito de campeões, é, eu não gosto dessa parte, acho que todo lutador merece o respeito, eu só penso em aumentar meus números do recorde, deixar meu nome o mais distante possível, então essa é uma marca importante que eu quero atingir e eu garanto que é só o começo. I've never liked to talk about or think about who's the best, and uh, I think that's for other people to do. Uh, my focus is just accomplishing the mission and let everybody else decide. Uh, let them look at the numbers, let them look at the facts, and they can decide from themselves, but num numbers don't lie. Also, I don't want to get too far ahead, but what are your plans if things go according to plan this weekend for the future in 2023 and 2024. First, I have to get the victory. I don't know. We have patch mix as the interim champion and maybe go to the the fourth belt. I don't know. Let's see. We have to, to see what is going to happen. I'm feeling great. I'm fresh. I'm good. Coach, if I may, one for you. Oh, drop. You've, you've been around so many great fighters throughout your career. I would only say in respect, a fighter like Patricio has to be possessed with being great to come to you and have this conversation of having a third title fight at a third different weight class. So as a coach, when you have someone this great come to you and and say, hey, this is what's been offered. We're going to do it. How do you as a coach and everything that you are with all your fighters, how do you sit down and have that conversation? And then how do you game plan for this incredible feat? Well, uh, the first thing you, you think of is can he make the weight? And as, I, as we've gone through this process, I see that maybe Patricio Pitbull has always been a 135 pounder because he's making it so easy, which makes him beating Michael Chandler at 155 in one minute. Um, the same Michael Chandler that's fighting Conor McGregor at probably 185. That's what makes him so great. And um, once we figured out, you know, we talked to Best Bio, if he could make the weight, I had no doubt whether uh, he could uh, pull off this victory. I, th I was just at U UFC. 288 with Henry Cejudo coming off a three-year layoff and you know he lost a, a, a split or a close split decision for the world title and I just thought in that moment it was like a burn moment I thought there's no way I go we gotta we're gonna turn over every stone for this next for this next fight for Patricia to accomplish and conquer something that's never been conquered before uh so Right after UFC 288, I go on the Ariel Hawani show. After that, I went down to Brazil, went straight to the gym, and lo and behold, I see Patricio's got something in store, a secret for Bellator 297. He brought in Sergio Pettis' old uh, coach, 
of eight years of the Pettis brothers. So, you know, he's turned over every stone to make sure that he can, uh, uh, for this, for this victory to happen. And it wasn't much me. It's, it's, it's all Patricio. When I see he's willing to do whatever it takes and he's willing to be on a diet for six months where most athletes aren't willing to do the diet he's doing for eight weeks. You mentioned how, how tough your opponent is. He's, he's talented and he's technical. What do you see as your biggest advantage going into this fight? My will. Nobody has my will. Nobody. And coach, you mentioned, you know, bringing in uh, Daniel Wanderlei, former uh, coach for Sergio Pettis. Can you talk about how that came about? And was it a big surprise to just you? Or did you know that this was happening coming in? Oh, you know me. I'm a captain. And, uh, you know, all is fair and love and war. I wish I could have thought of that tactic. Um, but it was all Patricio Pitbull. Well, I started. Uh, eu fui em Recife, uma cidade perto de Natal, e a gente tava no hotel e eram três homens, só tinha uma cama, e aí, porque não tinha mais vaga em hotel. I, was, I went to Recife to get my visa. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a city uh, about two hours from Natal, Brazil. I have to get an American visa, tourist visa, or I'm sorry, work visa. And I went to my... Eu tinha que entrar, eu tinha que achar um hotel, mas não, não consegui. Só tinha, um, tinha três, três homens e a gente ficou... Quando entrou no quarto, só tinha uma cama. There was three of us, and then we found a hotel, but there was only one bed. Aí, meu amigo Rony Jason tava... É, pensando em quem pedir ajuda e aí ele lembrou de um amigo Hugo. So uh, his one of our fighters, Honey Jason, former Ultimate Fighter winner, remember doing a camp in Recife and he had a friend named Hugo. E aí Hugo, aí quando a gente chegou lá em Hugo, já era de madrugada, já era de manhã. E... By the time we got to Hugo's place, it was already like middle of the night. E o cara é um fã muito grande de luta e falou para mim, ó, oh, cara, eu sou amigo de Daniel Vanderlei. Ele treinava os, os, os irmãos Pets. Você vai lutar contra o Sérgio agora, né? He said, hey, I'm a huge fan of MMA and I'm good friends with Sergio Pettis' old coach, Daniel Vanderlei. We grew up together as, we grew up as uh, uh, childhood friends. E eu falei, sim, vou lutar. Aí ele disse, você quer que eu fale com ele? Eu falei, mas como assim? Ele não treina Sérgio? Ele falou, não, faz dois anos e meio que ele não trabalha mais. He said, you want me to give him a call? He goes, but doesn't he still coach Sergio? And he goes, no, he hasn't coached him in two years. Isso era três horas da manhã, eu nunca imaginei que encontrar um cara que conhecia o ex-treinador dele. It was three in the morning, I never imagined that I would run into someone who knew uh, Sergio Pettis' ex ex-coach. E aí eu fui para casa de manhã, treinei meu visto, fui para casa. E assim que eu cheguei em casa, eu recebi a ligação de Hugo, perguntando se queria que ligasse mesmo. E aí eu falei, porra, eu não quero ser antiético, mas se você ligar e perguntar por você mesmo, perguntando a ele, é, pode fazer a ligação. So I, I, I went home, went back to Natal, thought about it, and I gave Hugo a call. I said, listen, I don't want to be unethical. If you want to give him a call and see if he's available or interested in coming to Brazil and coaching, go ahead and see what he says. E aí ele fez uma ligação entre nós três e aí Daniel falou que respeitava os irmãos, mas que seguiram caminhos diferentes e que é profissional e eu convidei o meu quebra ele aceitou. So we did a three-way call and he said, uh, I don't work with the, the Pettis brothers anymore. We're professional. And I'd be, and, and I, have a, I have a family that I have to support. And, and this is my job. And I'm interested. I'm interested in being part of your, of your camp. And that's, uh, that's how it went down. Three in the morning. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, guys.
Uh, I, I think so. Uh, before uh, accepting that fight against Sergio, it's not my mind because I was like, uh, how do I say, 18 pounds. I am like seven, seven kilos, like weight, weight division. And I know it's hard to make the, the, uh, the featherweight uh, weight. But now I am like six months on diet or more. And I realized that it's possible. So after this fight, if I win the fight and the belts are available to a challenger, I'm on it. Wow. Drop the mic. Oh, you well, you have a no about food. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, big big title fight on Friday. I know you've been waiting for this moment for uh, for a while now. Um, talk to me about how you feel, how excited you are to to get back in there on Friday. Um, thank you guys. Stay here. Um, I feel great. It's a fantastic moment for me for my career. Um. It's very important for my career uh, the, the, take this barrel and this uh, this moment I uh, I feel uh, this is the moment. It's a great moment for for me, for my life, for my family. Um, I'm waiting for the Saturday night for the Friday night. You guys were supposed to fight back in February, and ultimately uh, he was unable to compete that night. So for you, was there any reconsideration of of trying to fight him again in between, or did you just? Were you set on gold? You wanted to get the title fight. Que cuando usted peleó, cuando usted pelea contra él en febrero, fue que se rompió por algunas cosas. Y si usted reconsideró pelear contra él otra vez, o siempre fue su meta pelear contra él. Um, llevo muchos años haciendo este, esta, eh, esto que estoy haciendo. I've done MMA for years. Y sé que estas cosas suceden muy a menudo. I know these things happen. Y mi mente es bien flexible. My mind is very flexible. Y sabía que que la pelea que se tiene que dar es esta y tenía que tener paciencia y y tomar las cosas como 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 se dieron. I knew this fight had to happen. I had to be patient, but it all happened. It all came out like this. Y estamos aquí. Ahora es el momento de vernos las caras. You are, and you have a, a pretty tough test in front of you. You fought a lot of tough guys throughout your career. Is there anything that you think Vadim does that maybe is, is on another level from something you've ever, se ever seen before? Or, um, I guess kind of talk, talk to me about him as a matchup a little bit. Um, Every fighter is uh, is different, no? I fight uh, very good uh, fighters before, 
Um, creo que todos tienen algo especial siempre. They all have something special. Creo que Neko también es un atleta excepcional. Neko es un excepcional, amazing fighter. Pero no creo que está por encima ni por debajo de los otros atletas con que he discutido, he discutido títulos mundiales. It is what it is. For you, a uh, five-round fight, I'm assuming you're, you're excited to, to get back on the five-round bandwagon. Cinco rondas la pelea. Está feliz otra vez para otra pelea de cinco, de cinco rondas. Absolutely, yes. Uh, um, cuando estás en una pelea de cinco rondas, eso significa algo. In a five-round fight, it means something. Eso significa que estás en una pelea principal. Big fight. Y si estás en una pelea principal, es porque todo lo que estás haciendo, lo estás haciendo correctamente. If you're in a big fight, it's because you're doing something right. Y para que todo termine mejor, debes de ganar esa pelea. And so everything turns out the way it's supposed to be, you're supposed to win. Y más si es un título. Or if yeah. it's a title fight. Yo, well, when it comes to this fight and this opportunity, getting the Bellator title wrapped around your waist, when you think about everything you've been through throughout your career, more importantly, through your life, you envision that moment and what it'll mean. You mentioned what it'll mean to you, your career, but your family, every one of your coaches, what will that all mean to you come this weekend? Yo he estado muchas peleas, muchos títulos, pero esta pelea específico, ¿qué visión ve usted y qué va a significar usted para su familia, para todos los entrenadores, para todo su equipo, esta pues pelea? Um, es una pelea muy importante. Very important fight. Uh, ser campeón de, de Bellator daría un nuevo comienzo a mi carrera. Por ahora mismo no estoy tanto enfocado en el cinturón. Now he's not very focused ahora on mismo, en estos mismos momentos, right creo, moment. creo que lo más importante es ganar la pelea. Most important thing is to win the fight. Now, throughout your career, obviously, we know just how great you are. But I think one thing you don't get enough credit for is your mental approach to it and all the things you think about the mental game of this sport. I think there's a lot of things you say that relate to your average person. When it comes to looking at big opportunities like this, what do you think about mentally before you're heading into a big fight, whether it's a title fight or not? Extraordinario y que usted, como esta, can you read the last part? Just what it like, just going through all the uh, mental stuff and what he thinks about mentally before coming into a big fight. Que antes de una pelea tan grande, sí, que, que va por su mente, que pasa por su mente. Um, todo es bueno. Everything is good. Everything is um, pensando en que también lo he hecho, que también lo hemos hecho todo mi colectivo, todo mi equipo. Everything I've done well and everything in my team. Um, Joel, estás haciendo lo que te gusta. Joel, you're doing what you like. Uh, mira qué fantástico lo haces. Look how amazing you do it. Hey, qué fantástico lo harás esta noche. And what a fantastic show you put on. Right uh, has hecho todo con mucha disciplina. Done everything with discipline. Has hecho lo que has tenido que hacer correctamente. You have to do the right way. Has hecho un buen campamento. Great camp. Te has alimentado bien. You're uh. Te has alimentado. Eating well. Um, has descansado las horas que tienes que descansar. Taking uh, las, the rest. Rest. Rested, yeah. No te pongas nervioso. What I mean. <laughs> He's rested. He's rested. We're supposed to rest. Um, eh, has asimilado muy bien las cargas de entrenamiento. All the work that, that he's had done to do for camp, he's done it well. He's done it right. Así que... Lo, lo principal the first thing es tener un campamento formidable. Is to have a great camp. Y se ha hecho. And it's been done. Last one for me. Uh, I'm, I'm probably pushing a little here, but, uh, you know, in your previous organization, you fought for a title. A lot of people thought you won. Uh, the state commission, we obviously know what happened there. But now it's like you, you're with a new promotion. I, you talked about a new romance here with Bellator and how they treat you, the love they give you. So would it be a little extra special to come back to Chicago, win a belt with a promotion that is giving you all this love and also doing it in a city that really kind of stole it from you the, the last time? Gente dice que fue en la, en la empresa anterior que estuviste, eh, fue un robo la pelea que fue en esa ciudad. 
¿Cómo se siente estar en una nueva empresa que te quiere tanto y regresar a esta ciudad por otro cinturón? Bueno, <laughs> ha tocado un buen punto. You hit a good point. <laughs> um, a veces Times. Es, se te hace casi imposible, ¿no? Eh, it's impossible. En no tener memoria. To not have memory. Pero have memory. en ocasiones es necesario tener memoria. On some occasions it's good to, to remember. Y créeme que una de las cosas que más me motivaba. And believe me, the, one of the most things that motivate me. Cuando entrenaba. When I trained. Era volver a venir a pelear aquí a Chicago. It was to come back and fight here. Hace años atrás. Years ago. Fui campeón de otra compañía. I was a champion of another. Y todo el mundo sabe lo que pasó en esa pelea. Una vez más vengo a Chicago. One more, I'm back. Esta vez me voy a asegurar de que no sea la misma historia. ¿Cómo? Esta vez me voy a asegurar de que no sea la misma historia. This time make sure it's not the same as last time. Para el día que le cuente a mis hijos, so for the day I tell my children, tener otra historia que contar. I have another story to tell them. Tener otro recuerdo en mi memoria. Another memory in his mind. Hi, Luel. Um, I saw you talking to Patricio in the other room. I'm just curious if you could give us your thoughts on that fight. How do you think you see that going? Que él, él, ella lo vio hablando con, con Patricio. ¿Qué que, que cree que usted esa pelea sobre esa pelea? Son dos magníficos campeones. Two magnificent champions, two amazing champions. Todo el mundo sabe de la historia de Patricio. Everyone knows about Patricio's story. Es, uh, para mí tiene un grandísimo respeto. For me, it's For me, I respect him a lot. Um, en la cara de esta compañía. He's the face of this company. Uh, creo que cuando le ganó a... I believe that when he beat... ¿Cómo se llama el muchacho que estaba en el UFC? The one that was in the UFC. Chandler, Chandler. Chandler. creo que cuando lo, cuando le, lo venció, creo que... I believe. Dejó un gran mensaje. That's a massive message. No, no, no se podía dudar de la calidad doubt, de Patricio. De la gran calidad como atleta que tiene Patricio. Of the, of the calidad, of the, of the talent that he has. Um, de la forma en que lo hizo. The way he did it. It's amazing. It's, uh, tiene todo mi respeto. Has all my respect. Um, creo que Va a enfrentar a un joven con muchísimo deseo. Gonna fight some, someone young with a lot of aspirations. Creo que está dejando un gran mensaje en bajar a 135 libras. Y 135, right? It's amazing that he's dropping down to 135. It's massive. El, 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 el ser campeón en tres divisiones. To be a champion in three divisions. Right? Ok, eso es... <laughs> Sería el primer atleta en hacerlo, ¿cierto? Be the first to do it, right? En cualquier compañía. In any company. Ya de hecho, en solamente intentarlo, creo que... Just trying it. Just attempting it. Es de quitarte el sombrero. Just take off my hat. Y hacer aplausos por más de, de 10 minutos. Not more than 10 minutes for him. Porque creo que todo el que es atleta sabe el sacrificio Every athlete knows the sacrifice. que se debe de tener para poder hacer un campamento. Do a camp. Y, no solo, y encima de eso, and, and adding to that, bajar a 135 libras. Drop all the way to 135. El sacrificio the sacrifice que tienes que hacer en tu casa. You have to do in your house. La gente no tiene una idea de todo lo que hay que hacer. Dejar de tener una, una, una convivencia prácticamente con la familia. Stop basically being around your family. Um, es, muy, es muy fuerte lo que se, lo que se hace eh, eh, si tienes hijos, si tienes esposa. It's very hard when you have a wife, el dejar, children. El, el dejar de tener esa, esa relación con tu familia por estar haciendo tu trabajo debidamente con disciplina. To stop having that relationship that you have to with your family because of work. Merita todo respeto. Has all my respect. Y este hombre está haciendo... Está tratando de hacer hoy en día eh, marcar un antes y un después en el deporte. 
este hombre está tratando de hacer trying. un antes y un después so, an after and before in en este deporte y and? que sea un compañero de mi misma organización para mí es un privilegio y estar en su misma cartelera también es para mí es un honor and the same card is an honor as well. Um, hablando de, de su contrario eh, Pettis. es un fantástico atleta creo que va a ser una pelea que no vamos a poder estar tranquilos sentados fight that be able to sit down. Um, todos los minutos de, de cada round si es que van a la larga van a, minute, if they go the distance, va a ser muy emocionante very, very exciting. creo que todos los que estamos aquí I believe all, everyone has vamos a presenciar una gran pelea Gonna see an amazing fight. Disfruten. Enjoy it. Are you going to be able to watch it, or do you feel like you're going to have to be zoned in for your fight? ¿Quiere que la pueda ver o va a estar enfocado en su pelea? No sé. He doesn't know. No sé. Depende de lo que pase ese día, lo que pase esa noche. That's what happens that night. Lo que sí puedo asegurarte yeah. es que voy a ver un otro que eh, un jab. What I can assure you, I'm going to see a jab. It sounds like you're um you have a lot of respect for both of those fighters. Could potentially seeing that fight and then going in for your own fight give you a little bit of um extra push and motivation. Que siente que usted respeta mucho a los peleadores y que si usted ve esa pelea siente que puede entrar a la a la pelea con más motivación. Absolutely. Eso va a ser eh, pura adrenalina. No, be pure adrenaline. Echar más gas al tanque para tank. para oh. hacer una buena uh, salida en Fórmula 1. <laughs> have a great uh, have a, ¿cómo, cómo era? Sali ponerle más gas al auto para salir directo a la Fórmula 1. So you just to put more gas into a car to go straight out to Formula 1. My pleasure. Hi, well, <clears throat> Mr. Romero, you've won your last two fights by devastating knockout. At 46 years old, how do you keep improving at this stage in your career? Los últimos dos peleas fueron increíbles knockouts que a la edad de 46 años, ¿cómo sigue usted mejorando? Con focus, focus, disciplina, discipline, dedicación, dedication, y convicción. Conviction. And then your opponent, Vadim Nemkov, is a former combat sambo world champion. You're a former Olympian. Who do you think will hold the grappling advantage in this? Que fue sambo. Es MMA, guy. Es MMA sport. Haz lo que tengas que hacer. Do you have to do? Pelea como un gran guerrero. Fight like a warrior. Pelea cada segundo de las cinco rounds. Five, fight every second of five rounds. No cometas mistakes. Don't make any mistakes. It's no round. No, it's no. It's no uh, wrestling. It's no. Sambo, it's MMA. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, guys. Have a beautiful day. Well, first and foremost, um, first and foremost, the most important thing, obviously, uh, congratulations on your Denver Nuggets winning last night, right? Were you Let's a Nuggets go. fan? I am. I'm a Colorado fan. Yeah. I'm not a basketball fan, so I can't really say. That counts. That counts. But uh, yeah, you know, I just Amazon my new shirt coming in. <laughs>
Love it. I love it, man. Well, let's talk about you. Uh, excited to be back here um, oh, yeah. fighting in Chicago. You got a yeah. big fight in front of you. How are yeah. the, the vibes during fight week for you so far? Been great. Um, I feel great. Weight's on point. Um, you know, the vibes is nice. You know, this is a, a cool kind of historic hotel to be in. So it's a different vibe than just a normal uh, modern day, um, you know, just nice hotel. You know, this is a nice hotel, but it's it's a little historic. So it has a different vibe to it. Um, and this is my first bit of energy here in Chicago. So I feel good. Yeah. Do you feel like everything's really coming together for you at this point in your career? You got a, a pretty big name in front of you. You had an, another child recently, right? So congratulations yeah. on that. Um, Thank you. I guess, how's everything coming uh, as, as you progress through your Bellator journey at this point in time? It's a pretty big fight for you. Yeah, it feels great. It feels natural. I, I don't feel like anything in my career has been forced. Like, it, it, it feels like it's just feeding right into the next step um, as it should. I don't ever feel like my manager, my coaches, myself, um, the promotion, whatever it is, is trying to, like, squeeze me into something and, and force something that maybe shouldn't have happened. Um, I think this is the right fight. This is the right time. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I know you've always been pretty measured with your approach and you've taken those gradual steps up, but is it nice to kind of get to the point where when you see your name on a fight card, you're like, people know the other guy I'm fighting. Like he's yeah. a pretty big name too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's, he's about as big a name as you get in, in Bellator, at least, you know, he's had, um, I think this will be his 20th Bellator fight with me. So um you know that's a seasoned veteran and he's had ups and downs throughout his career but i would say pretty consistently like even when he loses he puts forth like a tough fight yeah. um does there something about that ex that excites you like the potential that a guy um may not go away like you you might have a i'm, I'm sure you want to get out of there quick but yeah you know you're gonna have you're gonna be faced with a pretty solid test yeah for sure i i understand what's the the task is i understand what he brings to the table um i've had eight ten weeks to think about it and to watch video and, and to see who he is as a person, as a fighter. Um, and he's a, a, you know, traditional Mexican style, hard nosed fighter. You know, he's going to fight until that, that wet, uh, the whistle, the bell, you know, that, that 10 second dinger, you know, until that's done, he's going to fight. So I understand what I'm getting myself into. I hope he does too. Fighting a guy like that, do you think it's a good gauge for the promotion to like look at you and be like Archie Colgan? Well, he just beat Emmanuel Sanchez. Like now he's ready to, to take on some contenders. Is that kind of what's in it for you? Yeah, yeah. I wanna I wanna prove that um, I can do to the people who are at the same level as me, to the people who are, you know, more experienced or at a higher level. Archie, we obviously know a lot about your team, your camp, and obviously Justin's got to fight. You've got to fight. You're great within yourself. So is he. But when you guys are training in the same room right around the same time, how much more special does the room get each and every day in? Man, I feel like just the camaraderie and like the brotherhood between us is is just like every practice is about the same. I mean, we we push each other. When you spar with somebody who you care about, but you you wanna, you know, compete against. Like that just that in itself just brings the best out of you. Like it's it's sweet that we're both training for a camp. I'm a little bit earlier than he is. Well, a lot earlier than he is. Right. So, but when when you go in there and if I hit you one time, you know, being that brotherhood, you want to get it back. So with with safety, obviously, we want to take care of each other, but you know, it's just always competition. So our training sessions are always uh good. I'd be dumb of me not to ask you being seven and oh, you're here at Media Day got a great opponent across the cage from you. What does this say to you that Bellator is investing in you? Obviously, I know you speak highly of your manager, Ali, and why wouldn't you, right? But yeah. to see the promotion getting behind you so much like they are this week, how does that, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. It means that they're doing their job and they see the work that I'm putting in. They've provided me with four fights in Bellator and I've gotten four finishes in Bellator. All right, three of those four being in the first round. Um, so when somebody is able to do that for you, you should uh, continue to push them and, and challenge them as they are with giving me a guy like Emmanuel Sanchez and trying to see, okay, can you do that at the next level? Can you do that at the next step? Can you do it at the next step? And that's my plan. I plan on doing that. Just a couple more here from me. Uh, so is it safe to say you're looking to make it four out of five? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, I'm not going to say first round, I'm, I, but I, I plan on, yeah, I want to, I want to get stoppages. I want to win. 
I want I want to make it a, a a decisive win. I I don't want to sit there and and sit there until 15 minutes and kind of biting my nails to see what the judges are going to say. Look, I want to go out there and I want to win within 15 minutes. That's it. I don't care about in the first five. You know, if he can handle what I dish out in the first five, that's great. And in the first 10, that's great. But within that next 15, within the 15 minutes, I, I'm, I want to get a finish. You do bring up a point, you know, something I, nobody's here really even spoke about today is you don't want to be biting your nails at the end because of judging. Yeah. Judging's been in the spotlight recently. Yeah. How important is it for you when you're training to know, yeah, I'm just going to go out and give it my all because, like, I got to leave it all in there. I can't let three other people so in case I defy, decide my fate. It's it's uh, super important. Like, I think a lot of people, sometimes they'll think they're winning and they'll try and pull off a little bit and, and touch and spar and, and, and try and go through the motions. And sometimes, probably more than not, they get the win. But those times that they don't, then you're set, stuck there for three, four, five, six months waiting for your next bout to try and get the win. You know, um, I feel like if I go out there and I give my best effort, and we go 15 minutes, then there's nothing for me to be mad about, right? But I feel like also if I go with my best effort within that 15 minutes, I'll get to finish. Job will be done. Oh, uh, what's the biggest thing you've learned throughout this path? I know you talked about the camaraderie you have as a team, the activity your manager is keeping you, the relationship you have with the promotion now. What's been the biggest thing you've learned about yourself being undefeated? getting elevated each and every fight that you've had? Um, that I'm getting stronger mentally every time. Like all the physical attributes are great. Um, and the techniques of learning, you know, this strike and that and, and this sequence and grappling and all that, <clears throat> that's all great. But um, my biggest piece is like over the past year or two years, like I've just been making strides mentally. Um, and that's from watching other people that I train with and like taking some of the things that they do, but also it's just like realizing the work that I put in, believing in that fully and who it is that I can become. And I fully believe that. And I understand that and I'm getting a lot of confidence. Hey, Archie, you're coming into this fight as a three to one favorite. Um, okay. usually in your Bellator career, you've been even a bigger favorite. Is there any problems you see? possessing inside the cage that he'll present for you? Or do you feel like you'll be able to run through it? No, for sure. There's, I mean, I have to be super disciplined in there. The guy, like we said, the guy's 20 and eight, I'm seven and no. You know, that's four times the amount of fights I got. Quick math. I'm smart too. Nah. No, no, that's, that's a lot of, that's a lot of uh, additional fights on top of mine. You know, so I'm not going to, I'm not sitting here and saying, I think I'm the three to one favorite. That's you guys or other people, whoever it is. I don't think that. I think, that this guy has a lot of advantages on top of what I have. Saying experience and and being, he's been hurt in fights and had to dig himself out. So I, I understand that just because if I was to hurt this guy, that does not mean the fight's over. He's a veteran, right? He no understands how to, how to battle his way out of that. So I don't think that I'm going to go in there and walk all over this guy. I do think that I'm going to be really disciplined and I am really explosive and strong. And I have good cardio. So if we go in 15 minutes, we, we can go there. But I think with my explosiveness, I will dish out a lot of damage. And we'll see what can uh, be taken. And last time you were in Chicago, it was a very, very quick finish. Um, is there anything that you're looking forward to doing outside of the fight, post-fight, that you didn't do last time in Chicago? Now with the yeah. warm weather? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm real excited for Chicago Deep Dish. So I did not do Chicago Deep Dish or anything really last time. I stayed all the way to the main event and just hung out. And then by the time I got out, everything was closed except for some spot with like, you know, some fried fish. Literally, that's what I ate. Fried fish was. But no, yeah, I, I want to go get some Chicago Deep Dish. Yeah. Thank you. Rush. What's up, Archie? Kwame Kogan. How you doing, man? Good, bro. How are you? Doing good, doing good. I see you iced out on Bryce Meredith's story. God damn. Uh, I just got one question for you. I know you're a busy man. It's taken you just two years to go from this new, lesser-known welterweight fighter to one of the top lightweight prospects in the sport. Would you say that 2021 to 2023 have been the best few years of your life? And are you confident that the next two years of your career will be even more fruitful than these last two? 
Yeah. Um, good statement. I won't even say that's a question, you know, good statement because it, 2021 to 2023 have definitely been the better years, if not the best years of my life. There's been a lot of joy that have come in this, uh, these past two years, birth of two sons. Um, they're both healthy and great. Um, uh, I've banged out. This will be my eighth fight in that same time frame. Um, I've had some adversity I've had to deal with and, and challenge myself into my career. Uh, I continue to grow up and up every step. Uh, so 2021 to 2023 was great and have been great for me, but let's say 23 to 25 will be better. Thank you, man. Good luck. Thank you. You've been very complimentary of Sanchez. Obviously, as you mentioned, he has about four times the amount of fights as you do. What would you say is his biggest weakness, and how are you going to exploit him on Friday? Um, well, I think a big weakness that um, has been seen is um, his kind of lack of wrestling defense. Um, he's not uh, – well, he, he's active off of his back. He almost kind of accepts it so he can elbow and strike you from the bottom. Um, and that could be an, one of his pros too, you know, because being down there and not just – uh, conceding down and, and, and also striking off it is a pro to him maybe, but, um, yeah, I would say that he gets taken down a lot. And, uh, that's, that's a weakness. Yes, sir. Kate. What's going on, Archie? What's up? What's up? Hey man, Emmanuel Sanchez is on a four fight skid. Do you think that makes him more dangerous? I do. I do. I think that uh, he's going to be um, the most dangerous version of himself that uh, we've seen. That's what I'm prepared for, at least. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing well. Uh, excited to be back here for another fight. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, great to be back in the Midwest. I'm kind of, I don't want to say I'm from the area because a lot of Chicagoans get mad at you, but I'm from a little bit up north and uh, the, the state to the north in Wisconsin is from the state line. It's nice being back and nice getting back into the cage. How long of a drive is it? Oh, from from here to my hometown, it's about an hour and a half but it kind of depends on what the Chicago traffic is like, which is wildly variable. <laughs> Do you like fighting that close to home? Like on Friday, will there be a bunch of people from back home here and um, see friends come out or, you know, I, after, after a couple fights of people saying, you know, how, how can I get tickets, Alex? Where I, I try to distance myself a little bit from everyone uh, doing that, but I'm, I'm hoping that some people make it down. And um, if they're not, not down making it live, that they're at least, uh, in enjoying their their time after work and and maybe taking a little bit of violence after after yeah absolutely uh you got a pretty big matchup here carl moore um talk to me about him a little bit kind of what you expect out of him and what your fans expect to see out of you too um if, if you guys have seen my interviews before you know that i'm not really the kind of guy to do a lot of research um i know carl moore uh is is well decorated um Bellator athlete, but outside of that, I don't really know a whole lot. I'm I'm here to fight my fight. Um, and like a lot of times, my fight, it's gonna be ugly and kind of wild and pretty violent. So uh just uh hang on to the edge of your seat because it's it's gonna be a fun one. You guys were originally supposed to fight in April, right? Absolutely. Um, what what happened there? I don't think we ever got like a reason. Was somebody get hurt or 
Um, yeah, I, I think that my manager had told me that, uh, his, his camp for some reason wanted to, to push it out a little bit. Um, as far, I mean, you know, stuff happens camp, whether he got hurt then, whether he was hurt before and just wanted to take a little bit of time. It just gave me a little bit extra time at my, my new gym extreme couture to, to keep working on stuff. But I will say that I'm, I'm a little disappointed not to fight in Honolulu, but could have been worse. We could have been Chicago in December. So, yeah, no doubt. Um, you just mentioned Extreme Couture, uh, new gym. Why? Why? I mean, it's a great gym. But what made you change gyms and go there? Um, you know, there was a, a life life changing event. Um, my my wife uh, had finished school, and we were looking at new places to go. Um, we had a couple different ideas about cities to travel to. Um, on the list was Las Vegas. And she says, Hey, Alex, how was Las Vegas for MMA? And I said that, yeah, we could probably make that one work. Um, and then, uh, you know, made, made the move to Vegas. And of course, if you're in Vegas, there's really just the one gym option. It's, it's extreme. And, and that's, that's where you're going to get good work in with everybody. So, yeah. And a lot of life changes, obviously, like you said, uh, we haven't seen you for a little bit. Yeah. I know you dealt with a pretty gnarly injury from yeah. that last fight. Um, can you talk about that experience and, and I guess, kind of what you went through and, and how you dealt with it? Yeah. You know, um, I, uh, I was laid off for a little bit, uh, six months of, of no com, no contact after the broken jaw. So we really, um, took a step back to the drawing board and worked a lot of pad work, mitt work. Um, but also while I was a, a little bit earlier when I was unable to, to really work out at all, um, I made sure to to get um, what was going on in my head right, and I I saw uh, um, a, a performance coach, a mental performance coach, who was able to to go through some techniques about how to not only not only get ready, get ready, get my mind right to get back into things, but tools going forward to to work on the mental side of things as well. So I I think that's been really super important and something that. Um, I, I hadn't really put a lot of time into before and that I feel, um, <laughs> doing a lot of ums, uh, something that, you know, before this, um, this injury, this broken jaw that maybe I wouldn't have done before. So. Alex, kind of piggybacking off of that, not talking about the injury, but stepping in there with a guy like Yoel, what did you take away from that? And did you learn anything from that fight about yourself? Yeah. Um, one, no matter how tough you are, you all hits pretty dang hard. Um, I, I, if anyone had followed my career before, I, I tell people all the time, I, I had a fight beforehand where I, I took another nasty hit, um, in a flying knee, uh, no breaks, no nothing. Meanwhile, you all does a quick little, a little hook and then, broke, broke. So, um, that's the one thing I learned. Got to make sure that we're moving our head. Um, but going forward, uh, the one thing that I learned is it's, it's important that me as a fighter to stick to my game plan. And, and I said that before, I, I don't like researching my guys. I, I don't like knowing too much about my opponent, but, um, I had a guy like you Romero, who's a legend in the sport and it's, it's tough to, kind of put on blinders and shut out all that information that's coming in. You know, y'all likes to do this. He's, he's going to do that. And, and so I think that's why it was so important that afterwards I uh, worked on some, some techniques in the, in the mental aspect to, to really focus and hone my game. Uh, coming back. Uh, first, let me apologize to someone from Chicago that you're not fighting in Honolulu, but uh, to that point, I feel like Midwest, especially the Wisconsin, Illinois area, MMA has gone down so much lately. Um, I, I don't think we see as many fighters stay in their areas. Obviously, you're someone who just found a new home in Las Vegas. Now, outside of people asking you for tickets, do you feel some sense of pride of coming back to the Midwest, fighting and putting on a showcase in front of a big sports city that seems to lose their homegrown talent? You know, um, yeah, to, to answer your question, first off, I, I love coming back. I, you know, I, and this has been a, a match that I've been excited about for a while. My first one back in a bit, in a bit, but, uh, always coming back to the Midwest is fun. 
because there's, you know, I, I, I mentioned the Honolulu thing, but really it's a business trip. And, you know, I'm, I'm not out seeing the sights and taking in that stuff. I'm, I'm hanging out and I'm, I'm putting on a show for the people that are going to come to watch, which I know in the Midwest, there's, there's not a, now, now it's going to sound like I'm bad, but it's fun to come in and watch a little bit of violence happen. Um, with that being said, as far as people leaving, I, I think it's just when you reach a, a certain level of sport, you gotta, you gotta find larger areas to, to keep working um, and to keep, you know, that, that steel sharp and steel mentality. Um, and it just, it just goes to show that we got, we got good stock here in the Midwest. It's, it's maybe, maybe a, a breeding ground and hopefully moving forward that uh, it, it'll become more of, of less of a starting place and maybe more of a career place. Now you talked about extreme couture. What have been the biggest things you've been able to take away from your time there? Really, um, I, I say this all the time, and like I, I could throw out names and stuff everywhere, but really, it like I'm saying, like I was just saying before about um, people moving, kind of moving to get that seal sharp and seal. There's so many different guys and looks that come through Extreme Couture, um, whether they're whether they're living there in Vegas or whether they're just you know finishing up fight camp or starting fight camp out there. And um, it's super important that you get different kinds of looks. It's it's not like, you know, some gym in, in the middle of Kansas where it's like, you know, me and Roy fight three times a week and I he knows all my moves, I know all his moves. It's I'm always getting different looks. I'm always seeing different stuff. And guys are coming in and they have the things that they're good at and you can teach them a little bit and they can teach you a little bit and you can pull and scavenge and keep building towards just becoming a better fighter every day. Last one for me, we're in June. So what's your plan for the rest of this year after this? Plans for the rest of the year. Um, so we got this fight coming up, uh, pending, pending the fight going on. I'm hoping to, to stay busy and get back in it. It's, like I said, after after my last match, it's been a little while, so I'm hoping to to go ahead and keep clocking in and, and kind of make up this past year. I've I've been unavailable. <laughs> yeah. Patrick. Uh, hey, Alex. This is Pen Corey from Combat Sports K. So you found the new home in Extreme Couture. I've got one question for you. What is it like training with Sean Strickland? Yeah, that's that one a lot. Uh, training with Sean is a blast. He's got a lot of, on the fighting side, he's got a lot of things to, to teach and to um, lend. Uh, on the personality side, it's it's fun having somebody who's so who's so passionate about the sport and who's willing to um share that share that passion a little bit sometimes sometimes it could be a little bit much and i know that there's there have been some times where there's people like hey Sean you got to calm down but you know he's he's got the energy that's uh it, it, i i find i find it a little bit um you know a uh, not addictive. That's not the word I'm thinking of, but a little bit contagious, you know, Sean gets in there and he's like, let's go, let's bang. I'm ready to, ready to do this thing. It's like, yeah, he's right. I am ready to do this thing. So yeah, it, it's, it's a blast. Thank you, Alex. You're good. We're good. Sweet. Yeah. 
Sergio, given everything you've been through uh, over the past year or so, um, can you just talk to me? How excited are you to, to finally be here for a fight week um, after so long away? And I'm blessed to be back here. It's uh, 18 months since I've competed. Long time away. Um, learned a lot last year. Um, more personal stuff than, uh, you know, than I expected. But um, everything played out really well. I think I made the right decisions and I made uh, the right moves to come back and have a successful Friday night. How difficult is that mentally as a champion? You're on top of the world. You know, you got a Grand Prix coming up. You got your face at the top of every poster and whatnot. And then to suffer something like that. I mean, was it a tough mental hurdle for you to to get over? Or was it, you know, from the get-go where you just kind of focused on the tasks that you needed to do to get back in there? It was definitely uh, hard to come over at first. You know, I missed on a chance to have three fights last year and possibly become a millionaire. So, yeah, um, definitely um, interesting last year. But I think it was like a sign from the universe, man. I came into the sport, you know, trying to create a legacy. And, for a bit, it started becoming about money where I'm like, okay, what can I buy next? You know, what, what's next for me as far as uh, merchandise or, you know, stuff that I don't really pay attention to usually. Uh, and I feel this comeback fight is the, the fight, you know, that I need to really create this legacy that I'm trying to try to take. Obviously, I know you were itching probably when you were watching that Grand Prix, Grand Prix like, oh, I wish I was in there. But um, kind of what was your takeaways from it? Were you surprised that ultimately the Apache Mix was the guy that came out on top? Was that surprising? Um, you know what? It's MMA. Anything could happen out there. I was losing a three-round fight and ended up landing a spinning back fist. You know, MMA is crazy. So um, definitely sucks to watch Rafian go through that. You know, he's my teammate and my boy. But um, that's how MMA works, man. He Apache looked really good last year. He did everything he needed to do to get that million dollars. Went through Horiguchi, Magomed, Magomed off, and put the cherry on top with that beautiful finish. Uh, definitely impressed. So as you were gearing up to to tell Bellator, like, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to fight, it's kind of coinciding with this tournament final, right? Where, you know, you'd probably want to fight before rather than sit out and wait for whoever was going to win mix and starts. So when did the Patricio option kind of get presented to you? Was it just immediately or was it something that you guys kind of figured out yourselves? Um, yeah, my coach was actually talking to me about it. He's like, I hear uh, Patricio is trying to come down to 135 and become a three-time division champ. And um it was around like December, January. He made a post on Instagram and Tate Patricio and his team in it. And they jumped on it right away. Bellator jumped on it right away. And uh, that's how I think things kind of played out, you know, just like Instagram posts. <laughs> and it's weird because I think a lot of people would see like the tournament, you know, Grand Prix final going to fight the champion. Like that's a pretty big fight. But for them to have this option, that's like super fight. You know, it doesn't get much bigger th than that. Yeah. Is this the biggest fight of your career? Biggest you fight of my career for sure. Especially after the situation coming off of 18 months and getting thrown into the deep end right away with a, a killer like Patricio, you know? So uh, definitely a big task ahead of me and um, big, biggest fight for sure. So how do you crack that code? Um, he's lost before. People have beaten him. Um, he seems to have a good knack for figuring them out later on in other fights, but he's a guy that's really tough for anybody to beat. So do you feel pretty confident despite his resume? Like you have For the sure. Tools? I mean, I feel um, just the person I became over these last couple months, um, I'm different now, man. I, I I had a, a super high and a super low, and right now I'm at the middle where I'm, I'm peaceful and calm and uh, just collective, ready to go out there and go to war. And uh, if I put everything together and have some fun Friday night, I believe I would be the one with my hand raised. Him dropping in weight, is there any sort of um, changes you expect to see out of the 135-pound version of Patricio? Can you, like, prepare like that for some sort of intangibles that could come with the weight? I mean, I'm sure uh, with the amount of time he had to pre prepare for this fight, uh, he probably put in the right money to get his nutrition right and prep for uh, making his weight down to 135. So I don't think I have any issues personally, but um, I fought at 125 before. I know how it feels uh, to drop an extra 10 pounds, and it's a lot, especially as you get older. So uh, I'm sure it might affect him just for that night, but once he rehydrates, he'll be back to the same killer he was. Hi. I was wondering, have you talked to him at all um, this week yet? Have you seen him? Because he's, he, he's kind of one of those guys that likes to – Poke at his opponent a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Has there been any of that? No, nah, I haven't uh, really talked to him at all. I mean, I'll, I mean, before we we're gonna fight, I went up to him, shook his hand. That's about it. But uh, other than that, now nah, we haven't talked at all. I know he brought out my coach recently, my my old coach to go out there and train with him. So uh, I think they're trying to play some head games with me and uh, you know get me out of my comfort zone and my element. But yeah, nothing nothing so far this week. What did you think of that when you heard that? Did you like you said? Do you think it's just a mind game, or do you feel like or is there a little bit of like, oh no, what does he know? No, I mean, my coach, he was my coach three years ago, and I've changed so much from these last three years. So um, definitely I feel like it was a mind game. You know, they they try to make it a big uh, deal, like, oh, uh, we got a, a special guest coming out. And I heard about a couple days before who it was, and I'm like, it's okay, man. Like, it is what it is. It's business. I get it. You know, he's, he's he was my old coach. That doesn't mean he can't go coach anybody else. You know, he's got a family to feed and money to make. So it is what it is. Have you spoken to the coach at all? 
No, nah, we haven't spoke. We honestly, we haven't talked in a couple of years, to be honest. Yeah. I'm more close with his son, but uh, yeah, not, not so much with him. And Patricio came out here and said, if he wins on Friday, he'd like to go for a fourth belt. I'm wondering <laughs> what you think of that. Ah, man, this guy's getting greedy, man. He, <laughs> he wants it all, but I get it. You know, he's creating that legacy, but we'll see. Um, You know, I think he's looking past me a little bit, to be honest, you know, he's just bringing out my coach and all that stuff, trying to play head games with me, but I, I'm, I'm not that type of guy. I'm chill. I'm calm. I'm ready to go get the job done this Friday. Yep. Just one follow up. Uh, the flyweight division in Bellator now is that something again? Not to, to look far ahead. Could you ever? Would you ever drop down to one twenty five again? Would oh, man. You that way? I mean, if if it made sense, I probably would. But uh, as of right now, I don't want to cut that extra weight. I'm good on that. Yep. Sergio, I kind of want to start off with a personal one here. Obviously, so much time away, and on the other side, in your family, your brother's doing so much. Obviously, you know, had the big boxing fight against Roy Jones, APFC, to, just this past weekend. You know, he brought out John Jones. It was a great event. How proud of you do you think your brother is coming back from such a long layoff into such a challenging fight? And on the flip side, how proud of you are of him, of everything he's doing? Ah, uh, man, it's been it's been great to watch Anthony do what he does. You know, throughout his whole life, Showtime, Kick, uh, Wheaties Box, making APFC, um, just beat Roy Jones Jr. in a boxing fight. So it's it's crazy, man. I'm very proud of him. And I, I know he's proud of me as well. You know, we've I've overcame a lot. You know, I was uh, the younger brother that wasn't supposed to go as far as I've gone. And, um, you know, I've, I've had to come over some self-obstacles and things that I had to do to, to, you know, create my legacy. So I'm currently doing that as we speak. So. That you are. And if you, if you don't mind me asking, you've kind of referred to it a few times, but you talked about the highs and the lows during this time off. I think the only thing any of us in this room can relate to you is going through highs and lows. Cause I can tell you, I don't know what it's like to be a Bellator world champion like yourself. Can you pull back the curtain a little bit to just what some of those uh, days were like for you? Yeah. I mean, the highs and lows for sure. The sport are crazy, you know, winning, losing, there's always gonna be one winner, one loser. But uh, last year, man, just uh, things were taken away from me. You know, I couldn't move. I couldn't walk. I couldn't, you know, do the things I do on the daily train and live a normal life. So yeah, it was definitely, uh, I learned a lot about, you know, depression and a little bit more about my anxiety as well. So yeah, it was um, a big year to overcome a lot of things last year and just uh, grow as a person, you know, outside of the the cage. I know Chicago and Milwaukee aren't too far, uh, they're neighbors. What, what's it like for you kind of being, you know, coming back and being in the Midwest? Obviously it's not home, it's not your backyard, but it's just a short drive. So what's it like being back here on this stage against such a big opponent right here? you know, not too far away from everyone. It feels good. I mean, as you can see, I'm already dripping and sweaty. I'm <laughs> nervous already, but um, no, nah, it's awesome, man. My family's going to be out here. I put in a lot of work uh, this last couple of months and uh, I'm ready to put it all together. I've had a lot of emotions built up and a lot of uh, stress built up that I'm ready to let loose this Friday. The easiest headline is Patricio is going for the third belt. The tougher headline is to give you your story and your spotlight, which is coming back from injury and stopping history. What's more important, just getting back to being yourself or stopping who many consider to be one of the best to ever step inside the Bellator cage? Um, dang, I am drip. I'm sorry, guys. I got a <laughs> lot of water in me. I didn't realize that. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not really worried about this whole, like, narrative of, you know, three-time champion or, you know, even just whole me coming back. Like, I feel, I feel like I've gotten better, to be honest. Like, I've gotten a lot better in the sport and as a person, so... Uh, I'm just really excited to do that. You know, all the narrative at the end of the day, it's cool for the social media stuff and all the media, whatever, but I'm gonna go out there and do what I got to do, you know, get this job done and create my legacy and uh, may the best man win at the end of the day, man. May the best man win. My last one. I promise my last one. Yeah, you're good. Um, <laughs> I, I think everyone knows the well-documented backstory of both you and your brother. I, I know being from the Midwest, it's not easy for a lot of people, whether it be here in Chicago or in Milwaukee or many places. When you talk about creating your own legacy and stamping that legacy. What do you think you can do for those who may never get into martial arts, but are following you and your story and how you can motivate them on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, man, that's a hard question. Actually. I mean, I, I just motivating. I think it's just like me as a person, I gotta, I'm overcoming a lot of things always, you know, I'm always dealing with like anxiety. I've had anxiety since I was a young kid. So that stuff always comes back and lingers every now and then, but um, just with, just um, you know, persistent, you know, hard work, staying consistent, not giving up on your dreams, you know, setting goals and really 
push into these new levels that you can push to without you even thinking you could, you know, and this is an opportunity for me to go out there and put on for everybody who's been overlooked their whole life. I think this Saturday, man, I could really be a representative for that. Yeah. Sergio. Damn, I am <clears throat> so sorry. <laughs> You're good, man. Dominic Cruz famously came out and said the ring rust isn't a real thing, but we've seen a lot of people struggle with it over the years. Do you think it's a real thing? And if so, how are you going to be able to overcome it on Friday night? Um, I mean, I, I don't know anything about ring rust. This is my first time actually having to even deal with an injury. So we'll see how it is. But personally, I feel, I don't, I think it's more of a mental thing, you know, to go in there and deal. I mean, look at me right now. I'm dripping sweat. I'm not, it's like, I've, I'm used to cameras, but like now it's like, it's a, it's a coming back to this type of thing, you know? I, so we'll see. Um, We'll see, man. I, I'm not really putting that in my head at all. You know, most of the times the stuff gets put in my head is when you guys ask me these questions and stuff. I don't even think about this shit. It's just going out there and being natural and being me. And if I go out there and be me and have some fun, I think ring rust won't even be a problem. I know this fight was supposed to happen in uh, February. Here we are a couple months later, a little later than expected, but it's going to happen. So how excited are you to get in there and, and fight a legend like Yoel Romero? Uh, а не в феврале, потому что в февралю была бы очень быстрая, скомканная подготовка. И когда ну, сейчас я подготовил, у меня получ, была возможность подготовиться более лучше и хорошо подойти к бою. А. As I mentioned, I had more time to prepare myself and be in better shape this time. Потому что когда дерешься 5 раундов по 5 минут, соответственно, идет более тяжелая подготовка и более тяжелые бои. Поэтому тяжело драться каждые 3 месяца 5 раундовые бои. This is why it's very hard to fight every three month five round fights. Was it an injury? Is that why the fight didn't happen in February? Uh, это была какая-то травма. Да, я начал, я приехал домой, восстановился более-менее, начал тренироваться, и у меня сразу организм, видать, еще не, не восстановился. Я приехал домой, начал тренироваться, но организм, видать, еще не восстановился. Uh, yes, it's basically what happened is like I got home, 
I got back home and I start my training camp. And uh, I don't think I recovered from the last fight, so I got injured. И получилось травма там на ровном, ну, в обычной ситуации боролся, боролся на тренировке и чуть надорвал мышцу. Yeah, I had like a small injury that happens during the the training camp, and that's pretty much it. Were you disappointed that you didn't get to share the the card with Fedor, or was there part of you that was kind of relieved that all the focus could be on him and that you could help him that week? Because I believe you were there, right? You were still in attendance. С одной стороны, да, я ему помогал Федору, как мог, Анатолию в подготовке. И если бы турнир был чуть подальше от моего боя, то, возможно, я тоже бы принял в нем участие. Uh, yes, I was able to help uh, Fyodor and Anatoly, so it was, was a little bit easier for me. So if the fight wouldn't happen as fast as it happens after my personal fight, I would be happy to fight the same card, but it was way too close to it. Но на этой неделе будет не менее крутой карт, которую я возглавляю и которую болельщики всего мира будут смотреть. But this week it's not going to be less, uh, you know, less exciting as the uh, the Ferris card since it's going to be a great card in general. And plus, I'm a main card. You said you had a, you liked this because you had a little bit more time to to prepare and study your opponent. So, what do you kind of expect to see out of Yoel Romero once you guys get in there? I expect that it's a difficult opponent. I'm not prepared for him as well as. На Кури Андерсона, на Фил Дэвиса. Так что будет тяжелый бой. Готовлюсь на пять раундов, но всегда хочу закончить как можно раньше. Expecting this, uh, since it's a very serious opponent, I was preparing for the whole five rounds because I know how hard it is, how professional he is. Uh, I hope I'm going to be able to finish it earlier, but I'm ready for all five rounds. I asked you well uh, this question as well, but I'm curious if you have any thoughts about the co-main event. It's potentially a historic night. Um, if you have anybody that you're rooting for or any thoughts on that. Ну, я знаю, кто будет драться в ком-ин ивенте. Это Сергио Петис и Питбуль. И так получается, что мы с Питбулем деремся в одном карте уже раза три или четыре подряд. Ну, буду болеть за Питбуля. Uh, yeah, I know who the main event is. Uh, I know it's going to be Paris and Pitbull. And uh, what happened is, like, I was fighting before on the same card with the Pitbull uh, quite a few times, three, four times probably. And because of that, I probably could not go, <laughs> go for Pitbull. Yoel was talking about potentially watching the fight uh, before you guys fight, and it could potentially, depending on the outcome, give him a little bit of a boost going into the fight. Do you plan on watching it, or do you just focus on your fight? Ну, в этот момент мне надо будет разминаться и готовиться к своему поединку, так что буду готовиться к своему бою, ну, держать в uh, at that specific moment, because it's a main event, I'm uh, going to be ready, I'll get ready and warm up for my fight. Uh, but yeah, if I have a chance for a second, I'm yeah, going to see who's going to win that fight. Earlier, uh, when we were talking to Yoel, he, you know, someone asked about the difference in wrestling between the two of you. He said it's MMA. And when you hear that, lets you know that he's taking you very seriously. I know you're taking him very seriously, but is there any singular focus that you have on Yoel Romero, given all that he is and the power that he brings into this fight? Uh Мы оба можем и бороться, и драться в стойке, но исходя из последних боев Юэля и моего боя, то я думаю, борьбы будет мало. Мы оба можем, вы знаете, мы можем бороться, мы оба можем бороться, 
so but uh, I, I watched the last couple of fights from him and I know myself so it's probably not going to be too much wrestling in this fight that makes for an exciting fight I bet the fans love to hear that uh when it comes to obviously talking about Fedor earlier you know he, he's now hung up the gloves and it's now all eyes on you to carry that torch to carry that legacy and to keep it going for yourself while focusing on your own legacy what does that mean to you Хотелось бы продолжать продолжать дело Федора, потому что мы все из старого школы, с одной команды и его ученики. I want to continue his legacy actually because we all from the same city, Staria School from Russia, and we all his students, so I definitely want to continue his legacy. Хотелось бы, чтобы представители нашего нашей школы всегда были в топах и кто-то Hopefully, all uh, you know, still, all of the better students would be like champions and would be on top. That's a great team you come from. My last one here, Fedor fought here in Chicago a bunch of times. This is now your second time fighting here. Is this uh, something the team Fedor like fighting in Chicago? Do you enjoy fighting here in Chicago? Да, мне очень понравилось выступать в Чикаго, и здесь хорошая публика, и хороший, очень, очень красивый город. I love Chicago, I uh, love the fans over here, very nice and beautiful city, so I definitely like to fight here. Thank you. Thank you for joining our official Bell Tour 297 pre-fight media day.